Hello everyone. Apologies for the delay. I was bouldering, getting my uh, morning reps in. But we're here just in time. You can hear the coffee brewing in the back, being loud as ever. But we're here for the last match. How are we doing? We got the deep house on, but I think I'm gonna switch to, uh, to a set here. Let's go for this one. A big applause for team of us live from the boiler room. If, if it wasn't was obvious, we're listening to Tale of Us. Enjoy friends. Enjoy friends. Hey, Kilimanjaro, Neil, Coacher. LHS Chess. We got 10 gifted subs from him and we're just getting started here. Thank you to LHS. Chicken pants, 100 bits, and wow, really appreciate it. LHS Chess getting started here. Welcome. Tuttle family. Hey, Bucko. No, Bucko, we have two coffee machines. We have one uh, downstairs, and then we have a, uh, an espresso in the stream room. Just for that last minute coffee. Yeah, Eric does look pretty chill. He, he's got the Seabra merch on, he's got the, the sweater. He's playing Jan Christoph Duda. I'm gonna get my coffee. Hey, Force to Draw, Clark, Azizi, Amanda. What's up? Good morning, everyone. More coffee. Well, LHS, let's see if he can deliver. Let's first of all, check our opening here. Um, okay, so Berlin. Man, LHS, Chess wasn't kidding. He really wants to see a win today. 
Eric gave us a taste, you know, beating Mamad Yarov. Now, now we all want more. More board wants more. So this e4 square, quite important. There's a lot of theory that goes into these positions. Instinctively, they always feel like, you know, if white plays knight g5 and just gets good control over e4, then I always like his position, but black has often these tricky resources. He's way ahead in development, so that's one thing. Castle, both rooks are like ready to enter the position here. This d3 pawn is tender. For example, if I make a regular move like castling, then you always have to reckon with rook d8. No doubt about that. If black is able to just, you know, simplify everything here, even at the cost of his pawn, that's going to be an achievement. Uh, usually this is, if he was to play castle, this would be met by something like knight e4. And, you know, it's just, just very even, these, uh, these sort of positions. So... Really, white is trying to get the light squared bishop. Like, mistake for black would be to do this. This is kind of like the King's Indian attack speed run that I was doing. I was saying, like, if you ever get this light squared bishop from black, this guy is dominant by comparison. But of course, he's not going to bend to his will. Oh, thank you, LHS. I'm not sure uh, I'll ever be on the same battlefield again, but that's good to know. Crash Duncan says, shots on me at laissez-faire post win. Actually, we've, uh, yeah, we've definitely been there. I think it's a good spot. I think it's a good spot. Yeah, Eric's a little bit casual today, you know. I, hey, you know, I ask the question all the time. I can't break tradition. Rate the fit. Eric's rocking some chest bra merch, and I can't tell. It looks like maybe a black crew neck t-shirt. We still gotta rate the fit. Six point nine out of ten. Acceptable answer. Hey Chanel, how are you? Gajillionaire, thanks for the five months. Tommy J Salami, tier three for 22 months. LHS Chess has been in here with 30. Now, 30 gifted subs from LHS Chess. The guy is fiending for a W this morning. Can we get him one? Thanks a lot for the support. Blade9, thanks for 13 months with Prime. Perfectly confused. A perfectly confused one. Thank you for the prime sub. That's a, a fresh one. Brand new. DC 90 thanks for the 14 months. And Ro here, 14 months as well. It's Ro here. And what's up, dude? I don't think so, Amadon. There wasn't a lot to bet on last night, honestly speaking. Tonight will be a big one. Tonight, the Raptors play uh, the 76ers. And the Flames play uh, Minnesota. And both are pretty much even line. So Eric went with the um, the move that I was referring to earlier, where instead of just playing knight e4, like castling, right? Because, you know, black plays here, this is pretty damn even. Like, you're not really expecting to win the game here as white. Um, so the move that Eric went with was knight g5. So let's say now this happens. Okay, you could use either knight, but let's just say something like this. Black would have to take this way. And first of all, I could take with the queen a pawn takes, castle. I have the light square bishop, makes a big difference. Or if you don't want to take it, move the queen, sure. Probably castle. I'm very interested in this move now that I look at it because there's no f3. But essentially, this is the setup that I want. Yeah, bishop here forces the queen to actually move away. I guess queen d2 looks a little awkward. <laughs> right? Because I, I wanted to go here. <laughs> that was my idea. I guess white could play knight g3. 
Feels like Black is achieving things here though. Strangely enough. And I don't really know what the heck is happening here. Guess this looks okay. Bishop H3 take. Shouldn't be enough. I'm just fooling around with some lines here. They all look fine for white. But that's the idea. You want to put the knight on uh, e4 and only take back with the pawn if the bishop gives itself up. Eric has his opponent backtracking a little bit, which is nice. So let's say we castle and h6 gets played. We want to take, bring the other knight to e4. And it's a long journey before black, you know, go here. Then you have to move your bishop, then move your king, and then you can play f5. That's a lot of moves. That's a lot of moves. Thanks, JC Digital Girl with five gifted subs. Thank you, thank you. You got some uh, big support already. Love it. Knight g3, bishop g6. Looks nearly immediate. Is there h4? Is this a move? Probably not. Yeah. It's too much. Gotta be too much. Ship G6. I mean, I guess you just kind of, uh, I guess you just play here. You'll end up putting a knight on E4. Now I wouldn't mind taking with the pawn, for example, something like this. Um, even if I played knight here and the knight took, now if I take with the pawn, this bishop doesn't look fantastic. I thought h4, h5 was good. I just didn't calculate much after rook d8. Rook d8 looked annoying to me. Oh, he played h4, okay. Um, well, rook d8 was played, and I guess this is forced? I just thought that this move in conjunction with this wasn't great, but yeah. I, I love, h4 was my first instinct for sure. I like the idea. I guess I sort of was playing this to play h5 with my knight on g5, so that if h6 was played, you know, I wanted to take the bishop. And in my head, if I wasn't taking the bishop, then I wasn't that keen on h4, h5, but it is still a pretty good idea. So, what happens here? Each there's always this now. Knight a5 with the queen on d7 looks particularly annoying. So let's calculate this. h5, I don't think you want to take that. Let's say this. Ah, oh, this is just a simple calculation. You can't even take it. And you can't take this way either. Um, maybe you can. But I don't think you're happy about it. You're just in a bad position here. Maybe e4. Certainly not, <laughs> certainly not what you want. So how to deal with knight a5? Because knight takes c4 is kind of a big threat. And if you take first, and then try h5, this is always happening. I mean, you could play this, but you are you are just down a pawn here. Oof. 
Coffee, much needed. The metal chest, AB. This move looks powerful. Yeah. B3 though, first of all, just disgusting. Second of all, you have to reckon with B5. This move looks really annoying. Ah, uh, bishop to b3. Yeah, but not only are you going to lose your bishop, but your pawn is also going to be hanging. So that's the weird thing. Like earlier on, the reason that this wasn't so lethal is because white can... Number one, white has other moves like 94, but the b5 square is often available. And okay, when you put your pieces there, um, you're also inviting b4. So sometimes there's sacrifices like you take on f7 which is not a great trade for white but then you follow it up with b4 so now that it's happened number one the bishop can't go to b5 and there's no bishop on c5 for anything with b4 so um, it's much much more forcing Here, I will, I will fix the name for you, bud. You're right. Does it say dude I know? Or it's still cut off? I think it's still cut off. I really can't see. It still says Judah. fixed huh? that was a great day in the office well I'm done we fixed the name uh, whew, boy I'm exhausted badkins 003 thanks for the full year tier 3 thank you badkins how strong is Duda in this time format uh, I would say quite strong but Duda is a very all-around player. Like he's he's quite strong in a lot of formats. I wouldn't say he's particularly weak in anything. He's a pretty established player. Eric played Bishop B3, which is never a good sign. Because someone from the um, chat suggested it. This is interesting, eh? It's kind of a weird trap. <laughs> That's pretty funny. The rook is taking the only um, the only square away from Black's bishop. So that was the idea. That's why things weren't just completely hanging, and the same thing applies here. Whether or not you take this first doesn't matter. So instead, he decided to just take it, play h6, and go bishop back. And is it like time to face the music, basically? d3 is hanging, but so is a7. You could decide to take and go 94. Because, okay, if they take here, I'm not sure about this. You get h6, a7's loose. Maybe you should start by taking a7, otherwise, black would play this. Could be reasonable. He starts by just playing rook takes a7, and I think 95 is on the board. So, again, if he takes here, I think. There's just, there's just a lot of pawns falling. 
And white's one move away from castling. I'm going bishop d3, so it's pretty comfy. Gotta be a little, little careful. LHS chess, five gifted subs. He's not stopping. He sees rook a7. That's a pawn to the good for Eric. Uh, it looks pretty testing right here. F5 coming. Knight f4. So, yes, we're up a pawn right now, but it is a very, very uh, artificial pawn at the moment. So I'm not sold on it just yet. Black looks like he's got a ton of counterplay and chances with these two bishops and the fact that the pawns are about to dislodge these knights. But material is material, buddy. You're fearful, Nick? Well, this is a great part of the set. We're turning it up. It's gonna coincide with Eric's peak as well. Just a, a deep, deep bass. A thump. Jesus. That'll make a grown man act up. Baseline like that. Can I hide the mouse on stream? I can, but I choose not to. I want you to, I want you to see that guy, you know, squirming around the board. I want you to know where I'm flicking, where I'm dragging. That's how I connect to the chat. It's the last. Uh... If my camera died, you know, and there was no webcam on the screen, this is how you guys would know that I'm still here and I'm okay. There was no mouse there. We could lose all connection to one each other, one one another, to one each other, <laughs> without a webcam and mic. So I'm just increasing the uh, the amount of ways that you and I can connect. Okay, in case anything was to happen to me, you'd have a microphone, a webcam, and a mouse. Five gifted subs from Long Diagonal. And 10 subs from LHS Chess. The subs are rolling in. Eric's taking pawns. I agree with you, Amadon. It looks highly suspicious for white. Surely this can never be good, but here we are. I'm just taking pawn after pawn, I mean, Eric's time is ticking down. I don't think he loves his position, honestly. Um, it's not not really the type of position you enjoy playing when you're just taking pawn after pawn and your opponent's just coming at you with threats. Like for example, knight f4, let's put a move on the board, okay? You don't, obviously you don't want that. You got to take it. Okay. Knight being attacked. Can't go here. Can't, you know, very, you know, this is a very forcing line. Got to go back. And then, okay, there's, there's this move, but there's probably better. My first instinct is this. Rook has to move. This. Bishop takes, followed by bishop here, bishop here, rook there. I'm not... I'm not really like enjoying this. <laughs> I'm definitely not enjoying this. This looks looks a little suspicious. So knight, knight f4, you know, just has that air that good things are happening. 
Can we move the queen anywhere? Not here. You have to guard the bishop, otherwise you'll just lose. You know, queen c2? Are we really playing this? Of course not, right? Like, it just doesn't make sense. You have to... I mean, you have to take the knight, right? I mean, do does it? I don't know, like... It all looks good for black, but f5... Sure, knight d2, knight f4 looks highly suspicious, but I'm kind of wondering after... Oops. Uh, first of all, I'm wondering after f4 why white doesn't lose. But f5... Let's say f5 was played. Knight d2. Knight f4. Knight d2, knight f4. There's no way this is a move. <laughs> this move looks terrible. No, but there's no way these lines are feasible. Like, they look awful. I don't know. I think f5 is probably winning as well. Like, my take is that after knight a5, we're just in, like, we're in concerning amounts of trouble here. And it all stemmed from h4. H4, this was all rather forced. I don't have a good feeling after this, period. Just losing the light square bishop for the knight is not usually a good sign. Okay, well, there's your answer. I mean, if we're playing d4 here, it's clear that, that this is, uh, that this is resulting in very, very bad stuff. Plus, I mean, there's also f5 and like just simply rook e8. To reckon with among many other things queen c6 i don't know it all looks rough right i mean you kind of have to play this move i think yeah maybe uh black keeps the queens on but it's quite tempting to just take this. You get this massive pawn, so it's in black's favor to uh, keep the position. Queen a6 looks like the kind of move where you know the game is over. At least that I see this move and I know the game is over. There's queen a1, but there's also just simply this. And this is a very weak tether to the rook. I think queen a6 is done so, to be honest with you. Yeah, it stops castling. That's uh, very key. If white could castle here, totally a different story. Wouldn't be surprised to see him resign right here. Everything's gonna win. Like king d2, there's even bishop there. Rook e8 is a simple move. Black's also up a piece. Like this position might be good for black if that bishop wasn't there. If you took this bishop and threw it off the board, I still think black might be winning. <laughs> That's how rough it is. Very brutal position. I think knight a5 was a killer. There's not many positions where knight a5 is supposed to get your light squared bishop. Let's say losing your light squared bishop is the worst thing for this structure. Because the deep on just dies, like, it just falls apart. Imagine white had a3. It could tuck the bishop back, it'd make the world of difference. I think we'll see resignation, honestly. I can't think of a move.
like this tether is really bad. So let's say rook takes, just runs into bishop here with rook e8 coming, plus queen a1 is on deck. c4 to try to castle, I mean you're getting checked here as well. And it's like, you know, what do you do? <laughs> There's nothing to do. Rook c4 makes sense to try to castle, but believe me, you're not going to be able to. If takes, queen takes, you lose on the spot to this, so it's kind of brutal. Queen here, so you want to just take? Salty would play bishop d3, but I think take and bishop d3 is uh, probably sufficient. This is fun though, right? I, I think in a fun way, this is absolutely not resignable. <laughs> I think black has to be a little careful not to win material in this way. <laughs> I think there are much better ways to win material. This looks like it sucks. Yeah, queen, queen takes b2 is absolutely the correct move. That, that there's no way there's no way that that is good. Yeah, queen takes b2. It's very clear that um, that white doesn't have anything, but it's just funny that queen takes and this actually wins material, but it might be like close to blunder or something. Of course, black is winning, but king c2, knight d3, c5, b, you know, like I would probably lose this with black. Queen takes b2 is far more lethal, but it was this moment here, so I thought... I initially thought about h4, first instinct, right? You want to play h5, and it's clear that if you do this and someone plays knight there, that you can consider this. So if they take, you take that. And the knight's not great, and you've gotten rid of his light score bishop. But the reaction to h4 was rook d8, so now the threat is this. And there's no way to react to this other than putting a knight here. But now, once a knight is there, anytime the move knight a5 is played, if you try h5, the bishop can give itself up for a knight, and then the knight can take the bishop. Previously, there was no knight for the bishop to give itself up for, the bishop was just trapped. So, it's possible that just h4 was no good, because bishop b3, it, it's a bad sign. It's a bad sign. If you're playing bishop b3, you're losing the most important piece in your position. Structurally, it holds it together on the light squares. Like, that's the piece white's trying to take, that's the piece black's trying to take. Black succeeded, and white did not in this game. And, I mean, black basically won the game because of this guy. If this pawn is on c2, the whole game changes. The whole game changes. That pawn's on c2, Suddenly that's defended, that's defended, everything's different. But the pawn on c3, on a dark square, weakening the light squares, plus no light square bishop, is just too much. Well, bishop c2 was never never possible, dude. What do you mean? You want Eric to go bishop b3 and bishop c2? You want to take two moves? Maybe uh, over the board, that would be possible. You could try to move twice, but online, they're playing on a computer, it's just impossible. They're not even able, like physically, the, the software won't allow you to even do it. So maybe if you were playing Duda 2750, you could try to sneak a move by him over the board. And I wish you the best of luck with that, but on the computer, it won't even let you try. 
sadly. Yeah, even with two moves, maybe black's fine. That's the problem. That's the problem. If you can take two moves in a position and your opponent might still be better, it's not, not good. But H, H4 looked maybe uh, just wrong um, because Rook D8 and Knight A5 is 100% forcing. So if not h4, then, you know, I was thinking castle, but remember, if you castle, I'm looking at this move again. e5 is hanging, but that bishop is just so valuable. Man, Eric is probably replaying the entire game in his head right now. I just realized he was still on the camera. He's probably replaying the game in his head right now, wondering maybe why he did h4, because I assume that he's realizing that this is all forced. That if you play h4, black plays like this and you have no choice to play knight e4. And here you have no choice again. h5 just doesn't work. Maybe should you try it anyway? I calculated some line that was like tolerable here, right? Was it this? No, because just take. I thought there was some line that I found to be okay here. Maybe not. This just loses, right? Oh no. Yeah, no, no, this is bad. Knight takes you can take here, but black can also take here. Okay, yeah, you're down a pawn no matter what. Pretty rough. Yeah, that might be the best one, metal chest, but you're still gonna lose a pawn. Hard to say, like, yeah, this is... That's correct, El Fishy. There's no way to do it. There's no way White doesn't lose a pawn there. That's that's what, what I'm concluding. Unless you do what Eric did, but then it's almost worse than losing a pawn because you lose the glue to the position. So if not h4, isn't knight a5 a serious threat? Because so, Amadon, you're saying h4 isn't played there. Okay, I can believe that. It looks a little off. But, if h4 isn't played there, isn't knight a5 a pretty serious threat? We, we can't just make a regular move here like this. This move is extremely strong, knight a5. With the queen on d7 not being able to play this, Plus the bishop hitting it, it means we must have gone wrong earlier, right? Because a3 doesn't really help, like, again, our bishop's being hit, we can't save it because we're losing this pawn. So, knight a5 is an issue because we're losing the bishop, but it's also an issue because if we move the bishop, we're losing the pawn. So it's, I, I can't really deal with both of those things. So that's why I'm saying I must have gone wrong earlier. Knight g5, just not the vibe. Like, yeah, you can castle and go knight here, but you just don't have an advantage. We looked at this earlier. This is just not very special. Yeah, you remember, like, pinning the queen isn't very good because you don't want to lose the bishop, so... You could definitely do it, but I'm a little sketched out by it. Still, 
Bishop b5, a6, what, if you move, you lose the pawn, and if you take, that's exactly what I want. So bishop b5 doesn't look like it helps. b4 stops knight a5, but I'm telling you, b4 looks very sketch right now. <laughs> Let's see here. Look, <laughs> I feel like you could almost take it. Now, I assume this is not actually the case, but let's say you take it and go b5, the bishop has to move, bishop takes d3, the queen has to move, the king will be stuck in the middle, black's about to go check, and in fact, black could maybe even check first, and then take here, and I've just never seen a, like maybe it's just fine for white somehow, but I've never seen a e4, e5 position that gets this messy. King can't castle? This could be very disturbing. But okay, I don't know. Maybe B B4 is probably wrong for some other reasons. B4, maybe knight D5. Because black also has just a very standard position. Nothing wrong with black's position either. Yeah, that could be the case, Java Bandit, Knight G5. The thing is, Knight G5, it looks so logical. Knight G5 controls the most important square on the board, and getting a knight there hits, like, everything. And yet, somehow when you dive into the position, maybe Knight G5 is the culprit. Nicola, thanks for 1,000 bits. Good day to Nicola Stosian. E4 before an HE5 could absolutely be played. But then it's it's just a different a different style game. So maybe, maybe just the way, the whole idea of what Eric was going for has to just be wrong. And you know, that's always pretty like demoralizing as a chess player, because if you look at the moves later on, like you could say that h4 maybe was not the move, but what do you do instead of h4? Knight a, we've already talked about how knight a5 is kind of strong. So that's why Eric's probably sitting there at the end going like, okay, I lost the game, I got crushed, but where did I go wrong? Was it... Was it h4? Allowing this? Well, no, because maybe it was actually the move before. Was it knight g3? Well, maybe not. Maybe it was actually knight g5. And if you have to backtrack all the way to this part, and knight g5 is just not a good move, then it's probably not a good move because of something, you know, five, six moves down the line. And it's pretty hard to understand that in this position, that knight g5 would be such a... Well, I don't really want to call it a blender, but such a misunderstanding. It looks pretty natural. So when when the thing that you've done wrong is like the whole concept, that that hurts your mental a little bit more than just blundering one move. When you blunder one move, conceptually, you know you, your understanding of chess isn't being challenged. But when you go for the wrong idea and it feels like the right idea, suddenly you're like. Wait a minute, what the, <laughs> what the hell am I doing? I don't think Duda had like special prep for Eric. I, f I feel like the word preparation to me means work that you do for a specific opponent. But I know that the word prep kind of does mean more than that. It's just for me, if I would say like, oh, I'm in my prep, it means that I prepared for the game that we're playing, you and I. And if you're in my prep, it means like, yeah, I've prepared this for you. I don't think Duda's in his prep for Eric here. I think he's just a strong player that knows this line. So he's just in his, his own files, basically. Like he's in his own, this is just something he studied. 
Not like he prepared it especially for Eric. So, yes, I think he's seen this position before. No, I don't think he got it ready for Eric, basically. Just, just something, yeah, he's just studied it. This is just stuff he knows. He's in his repertoire. Maybe it's one way to say it. So yeah, I don't think this is prep. I think this is just, he's in his opening uh, theory, his repertoire. He studied this before. Um, and he probably just knows that the simple plan for black is that when there's a bishop on c5, knight a5 is not, it's a little more suspicious because there's always this b4 idea later. But as soon as the bishop moves away from c5, suddenly the move knight a5 looks available. So as soon as black has one free move, boom, knight a5. And that, I think that's just, I guess it's just like some sort of understanding thing that when, uh, when the bishop's gone, suddenly knight a5 is just a killer. So black is sort of reacting here, but as soon as he has a free move, he's gonna play it. Interesting. I mean, this is why e4, e5 is uh, incredibly intricate. <laughs> One of the most difficult openings to understand. It's a four game match and uh, it's the last round. So we already know we'll be swinging for the fences here. Next game in about 15 minutes. Yeah, Duda is a very strong player. Like a lot of these uh, guys are, have been pushing Magnus lately. But a lot of times when a player is capable of beating Magnus in a match, what they're not capable of doing is beating all the other players as well. What Magnus does is like, yeah, he can beat everyone and he'll lose some matches, but he almost never loses back to back ever. And even if he'll drop a match or a game to someone lower rated or like Blunder or Mouse Slip, whatever, his consistency against the opposition is pretty much unmatched. Like that's why he's so much higher rated. You don't get 50 or 60 extra elo points over the next guy in chess without just being able to consistently beat your competition. So there might be guys like Duda that, yeah, are scoring like pretty well against Magnus lately. And you might be like, damn, like he could be a challenge to Magnus. And it's like, no, you're not even close to a challenge to Magnus on the grander scale until you can not just beat Magnus on a more regular basis, but beat everyone else as well. That That is very difficult to do. Yeah, the, the ratings are their just normal classical chess uh, FIDE, FIDE ratings. Yeah, but this was a surprising game for me because I'm not well versed in the E45 theory. So for me to see this position just explode like that, it must have really gone wrong in the opening for Eric. And after knight a5, I could see that that was the case, but... I mean, it looks strange to hang a piece, but we've looked at a few lines here. Everything is dead lost. The bishops are too strong, positions open, and this pawn is a, a goner. Next game will start in 10-ish minutes. Well, it's very, uh, it's very predictable, Red Sun, to just do the same thing. Like, you know, take any one of you in the chat, for example, you know, 
let's say that you guys play the Chirocon with black, right? That's your main opening. You're the best at it. You're really good at it, but it's your only opening. It's your main opening. If you go and play a top level tournament against guys like this, they're gonna have probably a guaranteed advantage with white against all of your Karakan lines, guaranteed. And if they go and check your games in the database and they see you only play Karakan and you only play one certain line, they're gonna go right all the way into that line and they're gonna have something nasty for you. So the worst thing you can be at the highest level is predictable, usually. You have to know your lines inside and out. Like for MVL to, you know, play a specific opening and play it all the time and only that opening, he's got to know it better than everyone in the world, basically. And even then your opponents are going to dive deep into a computer variation and out prep you. Right, but MVL is one of the hardest working guys in chess probably because of that, like he's just suffering playing these these Sicilians. So you, you could say like, oh, why didn't Eric play the Rui Lopez? Like, and, and why did he play the Italian here? But if Eric plays the Rui Lopez every single game, he's gonna get worse and worse positions from it, very likely. His opponents are gonna be like, okay, this guy literally only plays one opening. Let me just dive into my, you know, files that I have, which are better than anyone's in the world and find out how to refute it. <laughs> like, it's, it's really, really, uh, really difficult at the top level. I would get, I would get eaten alive. Like, you know, as black, what do I play against E4? Let's just say, oh, I play C5. Oh, okay. After knight F3, what do I play? Oh, I, I only play this. <laughs> oh, okay. After this, what do I play? Oh, I only play this. That's the time on up. Oh, okay, great. Well, now we've got, you know, five or six 2700s that have an entire database on this exact position that are just gonna line up to fucking slap me in the face. <laughs> like, it's, I'm gonna pl be playing my skinny 2500 level variations and these guys are gonna be playing like 2800 theory that they've prepped with a computer and are saving for a rainy day. It's not, it's not fun. And they're going to be pre-moving the entire game. So one of the worst things you can be at the highest level is predictable. That's for sure. Uh, Harold Oho, thanks for the... That's a full year. Hey, thanks, Harold. Domino 9 with 300 bits and a long eggs for five months with Prime. Eric and his opponent will be back in eight minutes or so. On the hour, usually the next game starts. Uh, back to streaming. Well, I, he'll come back after the event, so I imagine he'll be pretty exhausted and jet lagged. So maybe next week, Eric will be back streaming. But I don't know. Uh, he's coming back, I think, the day after the event. The event ends today, so this is the last round. Low Valentinian. Surviving the opening against a strong player 
is like considered an achievement to get like a playable position. Talking about my shirt right here? In which case the answer is yes. Michael Jube, two years. Michael, thanks, buddy. I'd like to see another win from Eric, even if it's not a match win. I'd like to see a win on the board. You know? Those are hard to come by in this tournament. Period. Like beating any of these players in rapid chess at all, tough to do. Beating them in a match, extremely tough to do. Eric has won a match this tournament, yeah. Honestly, if we remember how the tournament started, Eric should have won his match against Giri. Remember that? It reminds me of playing a match against Nakamura, honestly. If you play a bullet match or blitz match against Naka, usually the first two or three games are competitive. Maybe you like squeak a draw. Or like you have some time scrambles and you're like, oh man, it was so close, like I should beat Naka. And then you blink and Naka's won like 40 games in a row against you. It's kind of like that. In this tournament, Eric was so competitive right at the start. And then he blundered checkmate. And then looking back from there, it's like, whoa, he, he's lost five matches. When if it had just gone a little bit different at the start, who knows where we'd be right now. Eric should have at least gone to tie breaks with Giri. Confidence would be on a different level. Everything would be on a different level. It's just so hard to, to think like, oh, it could have gone a completely different way. And he did come back and win a match against Mamed Yarov. So he does have a match win under his belt, which I think is impressive for the format. But, like Eric said, he's not there to be a punching bag. So, if he's showing up to tournaments and winning one match out of seven, you know, he's not going to be satisfied. Whether or not, you know, he gets an invite again, he's not going to be interested. Let's say he gets every invite for the whole year. He's not going to be interested in attending and just getting that score every time. He's a competitive player, so... High standards. There's a there's a phrase that Eric and I have used about ourselves for a long time, and uh, it's something that I'm not sure Eric has said in, in an interview to uh, to the Norwegian broadcast, but he's certainly used the phrase before, and. It's a very motivating phrase for us, us because uh, it's very normal that Canadians are just like basically peasants at, at tournaments. Like Canadian chess players don't have a reputation for being very strong, very talented, even making GM. A lot of players get stuck at IM. And we've been calling ourselves Canadian tourists for a long time as a sort of motivating phrase. You, we never want to be a tourist at a tournament. And a tourist is somebody who shows up, loses the games, but has a great time. Maybe it's fun to be around, has a great time, but just isn't competitive over the board. And as soon as we're tourists, uh, that's it. Like, then you're not competitive anymore and it just gets depressing. Being a, being a tourist is the worst, the worst thing to be in a tournament. But Canadians in general, like let's say you're playing an international tournament and you get paired against an Indian player. Doesn't matter who they are, what they're rated, you get paired against an Indian or you get paired against a Russian or Chinese player. Like there's just a certain level of 
respect that they command, just having that chess culture. You get paired against a Canadian, you're already thinking in your head like, all right, he's beatable. <laughs> like that's, that's your first thought. It's like, okay, I, I could win. It's just a fact, very sad, but. Whereas I get, if I get paired against a 1900 from India, my first thought is, okay, I could lose. Like, I could lose. It's like the next game is about to get underway. Eric's gonna have the black pieces for this one. Yeah, Pragnananda is 1900 rapid. I told you the story when I played him, right? I've definitely told it before, but... Um, I think he is like really low rated rapid, right? Is he still 1900? Yeah. So he's 1927 rapid, right? And his standard rating is 2600. And it works that way in chess because uh, basically they didn't have a rapid system. Like they didn't have a rapid rating system that you start from zero with or whatever, or you get provisional. What they did was they, they took your standard rating and it became your rapid rating whenever it started. So your first tournament that you play in rapid, they use whatever rating your classical chess rating is. So if you play your first rapid tournament when you're 2600 classical, you'll start with 2600 rapid. If you play your first rapid tournament when you're 400 classical, you'll have a 400 rapid rating or something near it based on your performance. So Pragnananda played his first tournament as a rapid player, probably when he was like 1700 feet eight. And then he never played rapid again. So he played one tournament, one random tournament when he's 1700 rapid, he gets some sort of 1750 rapid rating. Then he becomes a 2600 grandmaster. And then he's like, hmm, I think I'll play another rapid tournament. And then he plays a rapid tournament and he gets paired with me round one of a tournament all the gms are playing 1600 1700 like literal tourists with like cameras around their neck and visors and sunglasses and shit and i'm playing pragnananda in a rapid tournament the guy's 1700 feet it is completely unfair ridiculous i played him when he was 1700 rapid fuck's sakes <laughs> Like literally every other game was like finishing it. Like guys were getting literally checkmated in the middle of the board. And meanwhile, Prague and I are sweating it out for 30 minutes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. In Give, it up for Give it up for Tale of Us. Uh Give it up for Tale of Us. All right, let's listen to another one. Anyway, so I have played Ragnananda and Rapid, and uh, yeah, it's funny that he's 1900. I played him when he was 1700. What was the result? Uh, all I know is I didn't lose. I can't remember if I won or I lost. Or sorry, won if I drew. But um, I think, I honestly think I won the game. I just can't find it online. It was played in Iceland. I recall, uh, I, I recall winning the game in my head, but I just can't really find the game. It wasn't like written down, obviously, because it's Rapid, so. I know I didn't lose. But yeah, it's like very hard to find. It was like a side event of uh, Reykjavik. Reykjavik Open one year, so maybe 2019. Something like that. 2017 or 2019, I can't remember. 
Yeah, you, you can't find the game where you beat Magnus. Yeah, it's funny. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I played him and I, I won, but uh, yeah, you can't find the game anywhere. But I played him and I won, yeah. <laughs> so, you'll notice that Duda is basically playing an opening that Eric has played quite a few times. A little bit different, but just the idea of um, just taking this and playing with the imbalance. Black has the bishops, but white, on the other hand, is playing with the center and a little bit more space. I guess the idea is to play like this and then go bishop here and because if white takes this maybe it's yeah like it should just be totally fine um and if this maybe you even take first Again, it just looks like you can never really be that much worse. Queen g3 and rook d1 does look kind of annoying, but this one first is much more solid. It just never looks like much. Interesting, took the bishop. So this is, you know, opposite bishops. He's going pretty solid here. I don't think he's going to take back like that. Now that I see bishop takes, I think he's going to take with the queen. And if bishop e6, then white will take. White wants to play this position. With a very weak pawn there. Because then he can play f3 and like put the bishop there and just target that pawn for the entire game. So it's important that white is delaying this because if black plays this, then he's going to take. If black plays b5, he's also probably going to take because b5 doesn't look like a great move. But Eric's trying to keep the pawns on dark squares. Guard this guy right there and maybe also prepare a move like bishop to a6. White can always take this bishop, so he can feel free to put, you know, like a bunch of pawns on light squares. And this guy's always gonna be, always gonna be in the bag if he wants it. Yeah, Ben Feingold is somewhere unhappy right now. This is probably also playable. I think you might play b3 there. Although this should really be fine for Eric. It just comes down to this, like his opponent's gonna have four against three, but they're gonna be opposite bishops. The c7 pawn is always gonna be very weak. You know, you might just get some position that looks like this. And it's just slightly better for white. Just slightly better. Yeah, c3 hangs on b3, definitely. Definitely. It's more that, I guess this is kind of irrelevant to what I was saying. I, I think I played b3 and then I decided to take and just talk about opposite bishops when really opposite bishops can happen like right now for example, without b3. And you're just going to get some position that looks like that. And it's going to be pretty brutal. 
You're just gonna have to sit there, I think, and and just play play opposite bishops where you're not down upon, but it feels like you are, because it's gonna be four against three. So yeah, that's what happened. Queen f7. Um, you never want to take with the pawn. Yeah, slightly worse, very slightly. Yeah, no, 100% Rob. Definitely didn't mean to hang that one. So c5, queen c6. And yeah, the fact that this pawn hangs is, it's just annoying. Queen a4 also looks like a frustrating move. It just hits you where you don't want to be hit. So c5, queen c6. Right? So Eric wants to put his bishop on e6, let's say, but queen a4, Eric's played bishop e7, just kind of out of necessity, like, he's gotta defend this, he's gotta defend that. And if Eric played rook e7 here, then I guess queen d8 is the issue. I can't tell, maybe this should have been played rookie seven instead of rookie eight because a queen d8 from what i can see we can go here ah no i thought we trapped the uh, bishop <laughs> we do trap the bishop but the guy can go here and that's i'm not sure if it's trapped anymore i mean it is trapped but it's not because it'll get out next turn so it's only temporary okay that's pretty annoying yeah, so that sucks, right? You have to play rook e8, but then what you really want is a rook back on e7. So that's why Eric had to do that weird little sidestep. Yeah, white's position or black's position is just... Look at those two pawns, very uncomfortable to defend. You gotta do this because you simply have to, have to get your rook into play. White's position is very easy to play, but I don't think it should be, let's say, enough. Is he gonna go rook here? You're gonna lose that pawn. If you lose a pawn in this opposite bishop end game, if you lose c7, then you basically lose the game as, as black. Because all the pawns will die and <laughs> white's position is getting better and better. H6. So let's say this happens. Eric wants to go there. Because you just can't get this bishop directly into the game. C5. Wait, by the way. <laughs> Isn't this move very strong? I guess black takes here. Not so simple. Suddenly a lot of counterplay. But it was initially a little frightening. Maybe there's something there. Can you use a 3D board? You mean you or me? You can use a 3D board. A lot of people study chess that way. They like they go through a chess book, with a 3D board beside them, play out the moves. That's a very common thing. Yeah, remember the uh, remember the thing about the C7 pawn. This this was this is the intention. 
White wants to trade the Queens, play rook c7, and just basically win that pawn. If you take and go here, let's say we go rook c7, making a big threat. Here we have the idea to go c5 and bishop c6. What else? This looks annoying. That looks like the annoying one. Because you can't go back because of this. And you can't get your bishop into play. And the threat would be this. You know, if you give up that square, rook c8 will just take it. And this is what I mean, if you lose this pawn, like, Maybe it's maybe you can hold a draw, but it's painful to hold that draw. Oh, zigzag. Yes, you've KO'd me. You've KO'd me with your strong move. Uh, I, I give up. This this move KOs me. I'm out. I'm out. Can't even play King F7. <laughs> okay. I'm KO'd. <laughs> the light square bishop needs to be here. Oh, here comes a KO. I missed it. Eric missed it, but Zugzag saw it in chat. Zugzag KO'd all of us. Very, 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 very strong chat. Chat should be playing the tournament, no? Very strong, no? Looking at some weird position where you try to pin it, but it never works. I'm sure he's looking at something like this and getting concerned. Oh, Duda played rook d7. Yes. Dude, nobody is as strong as Zugzag. Because Black's plan is this, or King E8, I suppose. Rook D7 looks very natural to me, to Eric, and to Duda, but Zogzag had other plans. A very strong chat member. You should take C7. That's a lethal move. Uh, that's a serious KO. <laughs> it's so grotesque. After, like, the whole point is that you can't lose this pawn, or you technically, like, lose the game, or you feel like the game is done, because all your pawns start dropping. And then the guy can just play it cold blooded when your rook's there protecting it. It's so disgusting.
Well, Drew, after bishop c7, of course you can play b5. But the point is you just lost the pawn for free. Like, the, the game is trending very in the wrong direction. I didn't see bishop c7 at all. I didn't see it at all. This is what I was expecting. And I thought Duda would play rook d8 or something instead of rook d7. But if he goes rook d7, rook c8, now I'm thinking, oh, we just, we just go king e8? Like at some point, Duda has to play e5. He's gotta try e5, right? He's trying to fix the pawns on uh, dark squares. Yeah, that looks right. But yeah, Eric's about to play like a move like this. So let's say white does nothing. He, I think he wants to do this. And that's why I was thinking e5 had to be played. In general. I think he's going to play e5 potentially right now, by the way. But yeah, e5 in general. Need to try so that your bishop can maybe start attacking some other stuff. Um, but yeah, maybe he could play e5 right now. I think you have to play it as white. h4, by the way, is really important because after h5, then there's no g5 anymore. Yeah, he played e5. This makes sense. Um, after you take, if you take it back, then I believe you run into this. seems to work right yeah that seems to work so c5 and this end game by the way does look does look pretty nasty i'm not even sure if white would do it um bishop g5 looked like it could be uh, another try This looks pretty drawish. Yeah, this looks pretty drawish. I gotta say, the double puns don't make a good impression. But yeah, you could take and just take here and then maintain the threats. Black has to play something like this. White's always gonna be a bit be better here. You basically have to leave your rook guarding this pawn for the entire game, it's like kind of frustrating. Um, anyway, Eric played c5, takes, takes, and he's doing what makes a lot more sense to me, which is not letting uh, the rooks invade. King takes f6. Oh god. Bishop g5. Yeah, white definitely doesn't look like they're losing this game. Okay, so peaking. Hmm. You want to get a position where hmm. I want to get a position where I'm trading the rooks. So, for example, here, how drawn is this potentially? So this is annoying. I was thinking here, we take with the pawn and stop this, and then we just put our king here and bring our bishop back, and there's no progress to be made. Number one, there will be progress with this and a pass pawn. Number two, you could tread b4. And now it's very annoying because the pawn you have to defend is here. So your bishop has to stay on this diagonal. Somehow that feels a little bit worse. But even, even this, you can't assume these are ever just drawn because you know, white will do something like this. And 
you know, at some point we'll play b3 and c4. And you can just never rely on, on positions like that to be firm holds. So black is desperate to try to get the rooks off the board and maybe get a opposite bishop endgame where you have a high likelihood of a draw, but I don't believe you're getting it here. Yeah, I don't think you're getting it. Oof. So, if you're not getting that, what are you doing? What to do? What if rookie eight? Almost looks like the move. This is nothing. This you have to take back. Rookie 8 kind of feels like the move. I thought about A4 Jack, yeah. You can look at this again. But the thing with A4 is at best you're just getting the same situation as before, where it's like this. At best you're getting the same thing. And I'm not sure that you can just leave your bishop here in these positions because then white is going to make a pass pawn and you might need your bishop to react to it. But the other thing about a4 is, you know, this is enforced, right? White can go here. And this is much worse for black. This pawn is irrelevant. White has basically a pass pawn and will probably win this pawn in a lot of lines by just taking it. Um, so he played rook e8 makes sense to me. And with the king cut off from this pawn by the rook somewhere, this bishop hitting the pawn, I mean, that's permanent for black's rook. However, I think you want to play bishop here, bishop here. Once you hit the b3 pawn, I think you're making some, some strides. The annoying thing, of course, is that your bishop can't get there. <laughs> it can't get there in two moves. So it's going to be a journey before this bishop attacks this pawn. And in the meantime, there's pass pawns being created over here. And black's kind of tied down, right? C7 is just loose. Yeah, the, the thing is, the time usage is not really that relevant here. Of course, if either one of these players was down to a minute, it would be very relevant, but because it's the way it is, it's more about what the position looks like than what the clock looks like. This is an opposite bishop position. Both players can play. Well, especially white can play moves pretty much instantly that it's not like time will play a serious factor. Oof. G4. Like, this is another reason why some people probably give up chess, like, professionally speaking. Like, this just isn't fun. <laughs> Sitting there and defending this position just makes you want to fuck yourself. Like, this like, is not enjoyable. <laughs> Good God. Yeah, let me let me sit down for an hour and defend an opposite bishop position against Duda. Yeah, that sounds like a good time. I think Eric might have to do this move.
Or at least I think he's seriously considering it. You can almost play C4 here. I'm a little concerned about that. I don't know. We have A4? Yeah, we have A4. She. Yeah, we have A4. Still. <laughs> I think it works, but maybe just. These are always so tricky, man. So tricky. Need to be so precise. This one is easier to understand. It's a very quick draw, but this, guarding the pawn, that's a pretty serious idea. This is an example of something that could just be winning. I think it's winning. Looks very close at least. Maybe black is holding, but it'll be like barely. Maybe it is holding. C6, king, b7? No. <laughs> It's holding because I think we have time to reroute our bishop. C6. Bishop here. Yeah, and then, and then it's important to play this. Because now if king b7 is pinned, and if king b6, c7, we have king d7. But these things are going to be like just in time if they work. Yeah, you can go a3 to get the wrong bishop, but it's more about stopping this pawn. Even if we give this up, we're not getting our king over here, so we're not making a draw. But I can tell you that Eric is... I Okay, I will say, I think Eric's probably going to go rook e8. The position look, especially with the time, the position looks like it will be lost. If I think it's one of the only things he's calculating right now. It looks like a position where white will win it if they get this and like that. I I don't know. It just looks like you you kind of say, okay, that's my best chance right there. Let me take it. Because allowing the rook to penetrate is it looks brutal. Interesting, rook d8. So... It could be a very similar idea to get an endgame. I think it was very similar. King takes h5, rook e6 and takes. Because there's no rook d2 until the bishop moves. And if rook d3, okay, there's always some other moves. So that I, I think that's why Eric played this. King takes h5, rook here. Rook takes f6 and rook h6 is mate. Rook e6 is just a disgust, like yeah, you're dead after that. Rook e6 wins, I think. Your king is in a mating net. So you have to play this. Something tells me this is not by design. Because now bishop c7. Then maybe rook e8 already feels like it was a better version. Okay, rook d3. But 
But certainly white has to be for choice here. These pawns keep the king um, king at bay. Well, king f7, fk gun, remember you're just losing a pawn there. That's not a very attractive option. He goes bishop e3. Okay, it's very interesting. I would have probably evaluated that as close to winning or like a very good winning try. But these guys are not on the same page. But hanging on to this pawn is definitely uh, an achievement for white. Now black can't even think about taking this. It's all about stopping the H pawn. So a lot of end games look good again. Let's say h5 and rook g7 looks pretty good. Bishop on h5 is really bad. Let's say we just make a random move, h5, rook here. You get the invasion you want. Black's doing nothing aggressive. And you just can't, can't really stop. Even that is hard to defend. That's what he wants. Of course, white's not obligated to play h5 right now or anything like that. Rook e4? No. Check, king here does not look like much. Do you have time for c6? Well, it's probably time for c6, but I'm not sure c6 is a good move. <laughs> Thanks for the gifted sub, no Ashish. I know that was a while ago, but I just saw it now. You got Adam Hart lover. Isn't Adam Hart a long time uh, subscriber? I feel like you caught him with his pants down there. Yeah, I think that's the plan there, Dr. Usadik. Remember that black or white also has a plan of just there and rook g8, just to get the rook behind the position. Uh, but it feels like white should start doing things either with his pawns or his king. Like black's not doing that much. Hmm. So let's say that this move is played. I went rookie four. I, I'm all, all the things I'm calculating are end games where these rooks get off the board. But I think something like this and this is a nice middle ground where the pawn's defended, the pawn's also attacked. And then this rook can move. Yeah, Eric is definitely trying to survive and draw this game. Very, very difficult task. Even if the king gets to the d-file, I'm not sure you're that afraid. Are you? Like, where's the king going? That's what I'm wondering. Bishop h5 threatens king takes e4. Captain. I think this is another shuffling move, though. I think Eric's gonna play bishop back. Like, I... You could play king g6, but I'm not sure that's the right vibe. The bishop looks a little strange there. Yeah, so just bishop back. Just a shuffling move. 
See if we can uh, hold it. It would be certainly impressive. Yeah, King E6. King F5. And surely Duda has to go for something else. Well, I think you go King F5, Drew, because you, you then you're repeating the position, which is better. And I honestly don't know if I trust Bishop there, Rook G7. I, in fact, I think I don't. <laughs> so, let's see, C4 played. Now, this is an important move. It might not look like much, but everything that you just saw with all the lines of Bishop F4 are now so much worse for black. Now there's no b5 in every single one of those lines. So if the rooks trade now, I think black is in a lot of trouble. Okay, he's definitely going for something like this. That's the plan. At least the short-term plan. And then after this, let's say the rook's on f7, probably king g4 and h5 is the idea. have to do this. He might play rookie four, which is just a, a move to like sort of put black in Zugzwang. It's not really Zugzwang, but it just looks like one of those annoying moves where the guy's clearly expecting rook f4. Rook e4 is a Duda move. You know, just one of those moves to make black shuffle his pieces maybe in a way that he doesn't want to. Very expected. Very Duda-esque move. This is something 2700 plus people play. It's just everyone's expecting the rook check. That's part of the plan. But this move, he's going to go back and do the rook check. But it just it's just a little bit annoying. Because you're expecting an easy move next. And now you have to think. You can't move your rook. Because you go back. It's just everything's a little off now. Everything's a little off. Why not rook h7 now? Well, then, then this. You see? Then you fell into exactly why Duda played Rook E4. It just makes you waste more time, put more pieces on bad squares. Suddenly, in all these lines, okay, the bishop's on H5. Eh, it's something. Something. So let's see. Bishop H5, I like it. It looks like a, a, sturdy, a sturdy move. The real question is, after Rook F4, King here, H7, how is this? Also, not even. What about bishop takes? How is this? Ugh. This looks lost. So, I think you need to do this, and king takes h6, but, I mean, this is just not correct. It just can't be. This has to be dead. So I believe Bishop, and all this stems from his rookie four move, which I believe was far stronger than rookie four. It displaced the pieces and yeah, he's, I mean, he's not gonna miss this. I think it was his whole idea. I believe this is the simplest, but he might just play some other move. But to me, this looks like it should be lost. Doesn't matter what you take with, really. Maybe this is better. 
And then I have to try this. I feel like with these two pawns it should be enough, but I assume there's like a, a nice way to do it. Is this lost? This one I don't feel as strongly about. Okay, this was all played. Interesting. Hmm. There's definitely a chance here. I'm really trying to think what my opinion of this endgame is, but... Ah, uh, no, he didn't do it, uh... No, this is lost, yeah, I represent. He didn't do it in the way that I wanted, which was this. It, it, he got all the pawns there, so three pawns is dead lost. Uh, I thought that this had to be tried. So then... At least... You have this, which with a4 makes it a chance. Not a great chance, but a chance. No, it's not a chance. Uh, yeah, it doesn't matter. It, even just keeping a pawn on the board is too much. Yeah, you lose this pawn no matter what, I think. Yeah, I think it's just dead. It's all the same. I don't think there was a way out of that. I'll say that. But, but when I saw Rook E4, I had a like I knew this this is a finesse move. This this is put the nail this is a put the nail in the coffin kind of move. Um all of a sudden Eric has to, for example, you know, move like this, allows something which is h5 that hasn't been allowed before. So I'm just saying move like this, it might not threaten something, and maybe it actually accomplishes nothing. But in your opponent's head, Black has been able to keep his rook guarding this pawn and covering the seventh rank. So he's not interested in playing a move like that. He also needs to guard this pawn, so he can't make any moves like that. So the rook basically can't move. The king can't move. Suddenly the bishop, which has been, let's say, shuffling like this to prevent h5, when you go there, you blunder what was blundered in the game. If you go here, all of a sudden you're allowing something that for the last 10 to 15 moves of shuffling, you've always been preventing. And then you start to get in your own head like, oh, so wait, rook e4 is, a, is an amazing move. That's, you know, that's an accomplishment that he's getting to do that. And I don't know if this is an issue. This could be totally fine. Right? Because maybe h5 you just go king g5, who cares? But you definitely get in your own head a little bit there. And that's exactly why you play a move like rook e4, because all the moves you've been relying on to shuffle, suddenly everything's a little different. The so rookie four is definitely elite. And this end, end game, it's not like Eric could have done anything better. Like, <laughs> even the way I was saying, where you get the bishop there in a4, it's just, it's not an improvement. It doesn't matter. It, it loses anyway. Every, every iteration is the exact same. If you ever give it past a pawn, it's then it's basically like yeah, having the three pawns. So you can never do that. And if you don't want to give the past a pawn, I mean, this, for example, you can't do this, so you have to try this. This will result in the same thing. The pawn will get attacked, so you'll have to play this, white will take, and have three pawns. So there's just, there's just no way to do it. This doesn't even work, though. And if you go here, they go there. <laughs> That's the, this is the nastiest one. Because this comes close to trading everything, but not enough. And three pawns is an easy win. 
The bishop and king can't be everywhere at once. Very tough, guys. Very tough. I mean, what else can you do? Maybe you had to just try for rookie eight here and just pray in the opposite bishop endgame. It looked rough though, from what I calculated. And both players missed bishop c7 here, which would have been an elite move. Yeah, dude is just pretty good, huh? April, hey buddy. Yeah, I've considered subbing at tier three, but uh, Bishop c7 here, this was a tier three move suggested by a pleb. Made me think that he was a tier three subscriber with access to the evaluation bar, but no, he was just a pleb. He must have some early access codes or something. Yeah, Bishop c7 was pretty filthy. But I think it's one of our strongest perks. Exclusive engine bar, uh, engine eval access. The next game will start in 10 minutes. It is a must win. Eric gets the white pieces again, but yeah, it is must win. These games are tough, dude. It's at the end of the tournament. It's uh, obviously not been going Eric's way. He got a match win, but everybody he's playing, he's the underdog against. And um, if he's able to come back from this, that shows some uh, pretty strong mental. No easy matchups is 100% correct. Guys, I'm gonna take a short three, four minute break. Refill, bathroom, back, leave the music on. Eric's got a must win game against Duda coming up. He's down 2-0, he's got the white pieces. If we see uh, another game, like a game four, I think that's uh, already, already pretty impressive because being down 2-0 to somebody, as strong as this and then winning on demand is, is tough. He's done it once before in this tournament, if we remember back, it was against Jordan. He was down 2-0 and off the back of a little bit of a Jordan uh, blunder, overconfidence, he won a game and uh, took it to four. So I'll be back in just a few minutes, guys, for game three and the final day of commentary. See you in a sec.
All right, we getting back. The next game should start in just a couple minutes. Players are starting to find their seats again. Hey, Ralph, Wooly. It's been a rough go so far. Lost uh, both games, which means this is the, could be the deciding one. But it also means it's all out because yeah, we need to win. A draw will be two and a half points for Duda. And we'll win the best of four. Ralph, I was doing some uh, bouldering this morning, buddy, in uh, preparation for commentary. Just want to let you know. Getting my reps in. Will Eric play very frisky? Uh, I don't think he should, but I, I also don't think he will. Like, when you need to play for a win against very strong players, usually playing overly aggressive and like kind of hectic or crazy, it's, <laughs> that's not the way to do it. Usually you just want to play a good game, solid game, try to keep pieces on the board, yes. But even just playing a position that might be equal, but with pieces on the board, it's kind of a better try than doing some all-out strategy where you, I don't know, toss the H-pawn up the board or something. Also, Eric's played this position a whole bunch. And he's gotten some reasonable tries, so I wouldn't be surprised to see him do this again. Although usually it happens more with A6 first. I think there's a lot of thought into bishop c6. By the way, this is the same move that Eric played last game, as far as I remember. Bishop c6 was what Duda played, and Eric decides to keep the pieces on the board. I would definitely not say we're out of it would be nice to get out of theory quickly books are nice but no i wouldn't say the position we're in is very surprising to do that it's definitely theory um and i think i think it won't be a, a shock to him to see this but boy that would be nice yeah if there was a free ticket to not playing theory every game I wish, buddy. I wish. So, here you just have a choice. Like, Black's gonna play this move, pretty much no matter what. Um, you either take, which is what Duda played against Eric, and then a castle, Bishop here. Those were the moves played in their game. Or you allow this, yes, black loses some time. Both sides can keep their bishops, but with the trade and how symmetrical the position looks, it's difficult to find something. I wouldn't say Duda's uh, the best at opening prep, no. There are guys that are more well, well known for it, but are you really like weak? Like, is, is Duda weak? And no, nobody's really weak or poor at opening prep at this stage. Definitely not. So I think you're only set apart if you're very, very good at it. None of them are really bad at it, honestly. It would be unfair to say so. Best known? Probably... 
Fabiano. I think Fabiano's prep is probably second to none. Um, I think he's probably number one. Giri is definitely up there, so I would say Fabi number one. And maybe someone like Wesley or Giri number two, three, something like that. Like Wesley, the way Wesley So plays chess, for example, is just very like engine-like. If an engine says that they like a position, then Wesley has a very good, like he can grasp very quickly why the engine likes it. And other players, they might see a position, the engine likes it, but they're like, actually, I don't really like that. That doesn't make sense to me. And they'll look for a position where it makes sense to them and the engine kind of justifies it as well. Maybe it's a secondary line, so it's not the absolute best, but it makes more sense to them. Conceptually, they like it, and then they prefer to play those. Whereas Wesley is more like, if the engine likes it, I like it. And I will understand why the engine likes it and internalize that, and I'll be able to replicate that over the board. So his moves feel more like robotic or like exactly what the position demands. Whereas someone like Magnus, you don't feel that his moves are always the engine top choices, but when you look at them, you definitely feel like they make a lot of sense. And Magnus in the top 10 is probably, he probably gets a bad reputation because he has insane prep, obviously, but it's it's prep that matches his style very well and it's like, it's very specific to him. He has like a different way that he prepares. So he obviously is, is one of the best in a sense, for him, but yeah, he's regarded as having, let's say, not the best of the top 10, maybe one of the worst, um, worst prepared players, but you know, it's kind of an absurd thing to even say about Magnus because he's just a very different player from anyone else in the top 10. He prepares for his style and his positions, and he's definitely the best at that. It's just not a style that I think anyone else can really replicate. Knight's g5 here. Sometimes when uh, you see king h1, g5 is a little bit more valuable because it, it also stops f4. However, bishop e6, are we really scared of uh, f4? Not really, huh? Knight takes, then g5. Something like this, queen e7 maybe. And this bishop is not amazing. I think that's why Eric took with the pawn. Yeah, Magnus is definitely extremely good at endgames, but I think Magnus just has a very good understanding of how to play positions that are equal. So I think everyone else in chess is very good at getting to the positions that are equal as black, like they have the prep, the theory, they can totally equalize. Magnus is the best bar none at playing those equal positions. It's a whole other skill to play them properly. Play Magnus plays an equal position like he's playing it for a win. Pretty even so far, such is the nature of the position. Okay, bishop c7, bishop e6, but black always has g5 as well, and f4 for the moment, let's say here. Is this anything? 
Is this anything? There's always this and there is a pin, so probably not. Nevertheless, G5 is always on tap and uh, I'd never be too surprised to see it. Yeah, this also takes care of the E5 square, which is kind of nice playing against F4. Still, it's not like F4 wants to happen. King H1 is also to play maybe F3 just to let that bishop back into the game. Black plays G5, then often that's how that bishop ends up getting back. E love Aiden. I think E45 is the most common at top levels. There's no way that's not the case. E45, probably Rui Lopez. Italian is uh, certainly up there, full second. But definitely that, yeah. Is G4 too crazy here? Yes. Black will play G5 and win your pawn and you will be worse. You will be worse. A5 seems to beckon the move A4. That's the usual reply. If black just gets to play A4, I don't think you're happy. There we go. Beam me up, Snotty. Thanks for the 42 months. Pretty expected uh, moves by black, honestly. He's playing this to loosen up the bishop. If the A pawn wasn't there, bishop e6, white would not necessarily need to react because bishop takes A takes is nice. But bishop takes knight takes is not that nice. So this looks like something white does need to react to at least. Still, you can always play a position where you have the knight versus the bishop. I think it's an edge for white. I don't think it's that much. <laughs> But that's something. Yay! Woo! Knight's better than the bishop. Pawns on dark squares. Woo! Yep, Eric wants to play this move, he wants to play this move. Maybe h4. Black, on the other hand, definitely wants to play g6, h5, king, g7. Rooks can double. b5, I think you want to stay away from. The knight will reroute to d5. And also, the pawn will be loose. Who's leading the tournament? I expect it will be Magnus that eventually wins after today. Because uh, I think that Prague is losing, but it depends if Magnus is winning his match. And he's losing his match, actually. Because I know Prague, Prague is, uh, is losing his match as well, and I, I think Magnus is a little bit ahead of him. Let me see, I think there's a standings thing here. Results? Info. Standings after day five. That's pretty outdated, isn't it? I think that's pretty outdated. And I don't think the standings here work. Yeah. yeah, we're on day seven. So it was... 12 points, 9 points. Okay, everything.
everything just happened the way we'd expect it. Yeah, this is more a visual advantage than anything else. Keeping the rooks on the board, obviously we can't play rook d1 because we um, drop the knight, but we still wouldn't want to even if we could, I think. We need to create something. b4 is an attempt, but you know, if you let's say you play b4 and you take with the pawn, okay, you give the d4 square to black, queen d7, give full control, that doesn't look like much. Um, but if you take with the rook, at least you have pressure here. However, you weaken your pawns. So it's always trade-offs. In general, Shorge, we're always open to ideas. Ideas, fun stuff, definitely. All depend on the offer. But we're not very close-minded, that's for sure. It's a visual advantage. Books are nice. It means that if you're tier 3, you can see the advantage. If you're not tier 3, this will probably look equal. Look like a draw, but tier 3s can see the advantage for white. This is a set fractal. It's an old one. I've been playing all the 2015 boiler rooms. This is dub fire. I think this move might be trying to go for this again. Now that the knight's defended, it is possible. But even in an end game, black should be fine here. Dude is not really in danger, but hey, what kind of advantage are you able to make against these uh, top players? Like, at least Eric has something. <laughs> something meaning an imbalance. Like, if this was a bishop, the game would be a draw. It would just be over. Yeah, Eric's definitely got the going home outfit on. Chest bra hoodie. He's like, all ready for the airplane. It's an exhausting event, especially because he went there ahead of time. So it's a week long event. He went a couple days before, and he's staying after. Like it, it gets to around a one and a half to two week trip, which is exhausting. <laughs> and you're spending your entire time there playing positions like this against players like this, trying to squeeze water from stone. The event's in Norway. It's in Oslo. Oslo. It is Sisteral. He's the best at it in the world, that's for sure. Um, score should be in the title. I usually put it there, but um, we're in need of a win here, George. We're down 2-0, so win is mandatory. A draw is a match win for Duda, as it is a best of four. That's what I was saying. Even if we don't get a match win, I'd like to see a win, period, because um, Eric can compete with these guys, but he's not getting the results. And when you just go a long period of time with no wins, <laughs> it's just very demoralizing. Alright, so 
if rook d1, number one, he could go here and just play this. He could also decide to take and do this. I don't know if Eric would take, but we get this square is white. However, we're giving up an outside pass pawn, which is quite risk risky. So I'm not even sure this is good for for you to try as white. This doesn't look doesn't look like something. Rook b2 might be going here. This still before as an idea, but I'm just never convinced it works. You have a bowling tournament this weekend, Valentinian? You know that's what Mayo tells people to do when they suck at chess, right? If you can't solve a tactic or you have poor chess understanding, Mayo tells you to go bowling. My god, man. You are so bad. You should try bowling instead, man. How, how can you play like this, master? So uh, I'm not sure if uh, you've taken up bowling as a result of Mayo Drag's peer pressure. Or if you just took up bowling, period. <laughs> yes, snorkeling as well is another one. My god, man, this is one of the worst moves I've seen. You should go snorkeling, man. <laughs> just... Some, some low T activity. Snorkeling or bowling? <laughs> queen e1, b4. I don't think you need the queen there though. What does this queen accomplish? You can play b4 right now if you want to. If anything, queen here after b4 just gives, like, makes the knight not protected. But it's, it's tough. It's just tough here. What can you do? You're running out of options. There's no pawn breaks on the king side that make a lot of sense. low-key respect for checkers players well are, are there really checkers players i have the impression that there's not checkers players to me sound like tic-tac-toe players it's like are there really checkers players or is it just like one of those games that just exists kind of like like a board game or something like, are you really a checkers player or have you just played checkers before Checkers is also a trigger word for a chess player because there's just so many people that think they're funny when they say they make a checkers joke. Like, oh yeah, I'm actually, actually I'm a professional chess player. Like, oh wow, I've never played chess before, but I bet I could beat you in checkers. It's like, yeah, okay. Thanks for the joke that I've heard 90,000 times. You're fucking hilarious. <laughs> also, no, you can't. <laughs> also, no, you probably can't.
yeah go is much yeah go is a pretty serious game chinese checkers more difficult for sure i played both of those interesting games i'm pretty good at chinese checkers but i've never played someone who's like really like sweaty at it chinese chess is another game that i have tried man when we did our trip to china and uh, tokyo we did um korea japan china trip a couple years ago right before covid and we tried everything we tried the we tried mahjong chinese chess and when you walk up the berlin berlin um berlin wall um great wall of china um they we went into like like it was literally like a like an outhouse because they have to have somewhere to go to the bathroom with, when you're going up this wall, <laughs> when you're walking up. And it was like a Chinese like shack, like outhouse. And <laughs> we go in and it's like barely, this would not pass any health and safety standards. And there's Chinese chess that you can play while you're taking a dump next to your buddy. Like, you're pretty much shitting in a hole in the ground, and of course there's Chinese chess right there. <laughs> so you can play with your buddy <laughs> when you're uh, playing battle shits. Nice little game of Chinese chess. And the thing about it is that when we got there, there was a position already on the board. So I think what you're supposed to do is just continue the game from the last one. It's kind of like team chess. Someone's gonna have to jump in and get checkmated, you know? Someone's gonna have to be the guy that comes in and takes the L. If you're wondering why Eric's spending a bunch of time here, it's because if he wants to draw, it's obviously on the table. And, like the position means that if he wants to draw, it's there, but also the match, his opponent's up 2-0. Of course, he wants to draw as well. Um, he's looking for how to win. I don't see any breaks here. The only thing I see is B4, and there's just not much to do. Maybe you can try to reroute the knight, but every move that you make and every step that you take i'll be watching you i don't see anything every move you make is like it has a very good reply this just looks like a very uninteresting uh position nothing to do here truly nothing to do yet yeah, super mario so i like that you're coming up with a plan but just remember when you're doing something your opponent's probably gonna get up to something too so if you go here 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 and g4 and you expect me to take take and h5 take take and mate me you have to remember that that's eight moves or whatever like as soon as you go here i might just go here and you go here i might go queen d3 and i mean <laughs> you're not even close to executing that plan now not to say it isn't try but have to remember your opponent's gonna get up to something as well in the meantime. That's why it's so tough. B4, yeah. He tried it. He tried it. He's gotta do it. It's probably not the best move, but if you take with this, then there's rook d4 all the time. Um, bishop b8 looks uh, tempting for black. Maybe to put the bishop there, but. He's gonna go here and very likely put the bishop on c5. He could also just play king g7. Making something happen from nothing is 
very difficult thing to do. So let's say he plays here. What are some ideas for white? Yeah. Well, maybe I'll be more interested in trying this now. Just because I've shaken up the position. Like, for example, if, if we get a position where the queens trade. I think there are some chances here. I just wanted to trade the queens to put it on the board, but knight a5 would be a winning threat. Also hits this pawn, you know, there's there's some tries here. We have f4. It's not great, but there are attempts to be made. Rook a1 and, and a6. That could be the vibe. He's done this, which hits the knight, so there's not really any way to play rook d2. Here, you don't want to play, I think, takes, takes, queen, a2. It's nasty. But you could try rook, a2, and, and a6. Also, for the buddy that suggested this, not that I necessarily think this is going to happen, but at least the knight can get to f3, hit the pawn, and the previous thing I mentioned isn't exactly so nice anymore because loses pawns, loses other stuff. Also the queen's protected so you can start by doing this, which is a big deal. It's not like the rook is on b1, so. Knight d2 and Eric's just kind of found a nicer way to have the rook on b2 when he reroutes the knight. He's trying boys, he's trying. Knight on f3, pressuring here. All the ideas are sort of coming together. Correct, uh, correct steeped games. Yeah, covering this is important. Rook on b2 is quite ideally placed, I would say. So much so that I wonder how good this move is. <laughs> Bishop a3. I really wonder. <laughs> it seems really annoying. That's... <laughs> when, when you say something out loud, it points you to the right move. It's like, wait, that rook on b2 is amazing. Wow, it's such a good piece. It's on such a good square. It's covering everything. It's so good. Maybe our opponent should make it move. <laughs> nice little slew thing we just did there. Queen c4 looks um, looks like the idea. Also, a6 is uh, still available. You don't want rook b1 because of queen a2. And you're pinned here, your rook's loose. So you're really trying to prevent this move. Hey, mate in China. Mathematical penguin. What's up, buddy? Hmm. Hmm. He's gonna go back and we'll either see queen c4 or a6 here. I like queen c4, just, I mean, I can't speak much about the advantages that may or may not be there. Takes king f6, king e6. I mean, black's definitely defending, but hey, white's gonna have some pressure, get their king out. At least we can make a bunch of moves. Thanks for the 50 months, mate in China. He's using Twitch Prime. What about you? What about you guys? Exclamation mark Prime. Where are the primers? He's, he's doing the... He's doing the damn thing. The 50 month resub with Prime. You'd love to see it. 
Rook B2 looks normal. For those that always wonder, like, let's say queen takes queen, king takes rook b2 versus rook b2, queen takes, knight takes, king. We've basically gotten you know, multiple extra moves. Our knight's on c4 and it's our turn versus the previous case where our knight's not there and it's not our turn. <laughs> so there's a, there's a reason that you want people to sort of trade on your time, on your terms. Black's terms after king f6 are like, yeah, trade now because now I want to take back. So you should start with the move like rook b2 because it doesn't affect the situation. Eric's played queen a4. But let's say you were okay with this trade, you wanted to leave it there. You would start with rook b2. Because yeah, if they want to take you, they, it's two moves there behind compared to the previous. So, queen a4, king goes back to g7. We may very well see this. Rook b2 wouldn't be the worst prep move. Yeah, also knight c4. He's trying. But yeah, a6 at some point. Let's just put a move. Well, it's not a very friendly one. Let's say this. At least there's a clear target for white to attack. And he can put some pressure on that. Bishop takes h4 here. Good lord. Um, okay. Queen g4, j moss bar. You're a beast, bro. You're up to stuff, huh? It just looks unnecessary. That's probably the word I would use. But maybe it's playable. But it looks very unnecessary for black. Like, why would you do this? You only need to draw to win the match. You got a completely equal position. Why would you sack a piece? Unless it's like, um, like a forced draw. Like if the queen was not here and it was, uh, I don't know. I need to put it somewhere to make this example. But let's say this. Yeah, then uh, I could see it, right? Because we have a 100% force draw here. Of course. Of course. I get I get that mentality. Because as black, you're hunting for draws all the time. That's the result you need. But in the current position, it's just the best way to say it is just unnecessary. There's no way I'm not happy to see this move as Eric. In general. Like, I'm sure it's actually very scary to see, but if you need a win, aren't you happy to see this? I don't know. So his idea, I don't think is to take back. This doesn't look very appealing. I think he's trying to play H4. I, I think so. Basically, he's doing the idea of bishop takes h4 without sacking a piece.
Must be knight move, yeah. He wants to take on e5. If he gets a, a hold of this b7 pawn, it will be pretty good, right? Knight takes e5, rook c7. And then if king takes, there's bishop d6. That's very annoying. Um, and if pawn takes, it's just kind of a lame structure. But I, he's got to do this now. I think he's committed. Taking is just nothing. Same with this. Mm. There's no way that we have... So wait, how do we attack this? There's no way we have enough here, right? We're down a pawn. What's the damage? Black's gonna defend this and just chill, basically. We've gotta go for some a6, rook b6, a6 stuff. Huh. It'd be nice to have the king on e2. That's for sure. Can it be ranged? Or is this an issue? I mean, I don't even have to allow the check, of course. I can just go here. But if black's bringing the king there, then I start to have a bad feeling. That's an idea. Also, once the king goes there, this is probably at least decent. It's a weakness here. And sort of like probe around the position. But black is up upon. Very technically speaking. So king f2. Played king g6. Black's going a much different way with the king. King g5. Yeah, you can play knight e3. I'm not sure that that's actually that special. This is what we need. Yes, a pretty much a self mate. King g5, rook b1 played. The rook is not as flexible on b2 anymore. You want the rook on a light square to be just to be able to swing to h1 if necessary. Rook f7, nice little blunder ski. So bishop g7, almost certainly. And then... Rook here. And then rook h1, maybe? There's a check. I don't know how this goes. Like, having the king on the side is never great. But if you go king h3, maybe I could play this? I assume not, actually, but... Yeah, this looks like too much. Too much. Oh, the, oh, there's rook g7, hang on. Oh, this is great. Yeah, okay. King h3 is a way to blunder. So I'm threatening me. Uh, so maybe not so crazy. King h2. It's just that, like, having your uh, king on the side of the board, even though you're up two pawns there, can maybe just be a strange feeling, like if you feel like you're about to get mated or something. Ditto Bitto, thanks for the eight months. GM Patzer, two years, just resub to the channel. You're very welcome, dude. Eric's got a position here because, okay, if the rook leaves, then rook f7 looks quite good. So I think you're forcing the rook to a like, not brilliant square. And then maybe over but still wondering how we actually make significant threats knight a4 to c5 looks like the vibe because there's no bishop there and the king's cut off so i want to play knight a4 and i think black almost has to play this funnily enough because if you allow knight c5 i get quite concerned for 
box position. Hmm. Now if knight a4, there's rook d7, rook d2 to reckon with. Eric seems to be doing this in a very nice way in general. Um, one thing I would consider is playing this as black. Because maybe we have some ideas like bringing the knight to d6 now. I'd love the knight on c5 to me. That, that that looks like where the knight is is really saying hi. Yeah, rook d7 is a is a big threat. Exactly. I wonder if it's such a big threat that you can just play it now. Yeah. Okay. So he plays h4. Um, rook d7 has to be calculated. Because this looks so strong, but it looks like it should be too much. Still, it's a close calculation. Rook d7, bishop f6 is probably just too much. Is there anything there? Also tempting to try to cut the king off, but I don't think so. Yeah, we're getting to the bullet stage, but remember there's 10 second increment. There's 10 seconds extra per move. And that's that's quite important. It changes the dynamic. By the way, if um, king f4, you're getting into some murky waters with black because knight c5 hits the pawn, guards your pawn, hits e6. You're threatening all sorts of things there. I think Eric's playing probably beautifully. Knight c5, I told you, that's where I want my knight. I, I feel like knight c5 is the money square for that guy. Yeah, knight c5. And there's always this rook f3 check to get the king to go back to the g-file. And don't play this move because it's in check. There's no time for knight, knight takes e6. Also not sure if that's that position is even winning, but that's another story. But king f2 will absolutely prepare rook takes g7. Yeah, so this move is available with knight e6. I'm just not so sure. So rook here, I think it's it's almost this, right? If this, we just take. Yeah, rook g6. Black is almost in Zugzwang, truly. I think you have to play that move. But you're really getting close to Zugzwang, right? Because king f2. Isn't it almost Zugzwang? Here we take anything here, we have this. That, we have this. Rook h7, king f2. And like, the king is cooked, right? Yeah, I think he's he's trying to do this and try to take all the pawns. That's the plan right now. And this is why I was wondering. I was like, I'm not sure if this is winning. I assume yes. I assume you must like take and try some sort of a6 move.
This is a pretty alpha move because he's choosing not to win the material with uh, knight e6. It allows bishop h4, but white's king gets around. I really don't know. I, I didn't have much time to analyze that, but I assume it was quite tricky because the king gets here. You have two pieces over here. You risk losing all your pawns, and black has a uh, passed e-pawn. So what Eric did is maintains the, the most integrity in his position. White keeps all his pawns. Black's position remains tricky to play. And there's still pawns hanging like e6, etc. Rook takes e6. I feel like you really want to check this king, but rook takes e6, bishop to e7. I think we can take this, or even try rook takes e5 at that point. Yeah, I think it's time to take on e6. I think it's time to take e6. We want to take this and go there. There's no check that's going to hit us. And if bishop f2, rook takes e5. Bishop there. Do we have to throw an a6? Pretty annoying, yeah? There's a rook check. There's also knight takes b7. Yeah, the king will move. And then what? Knight takes b7, bishop takes c3. Maybe knight e6? Yeah, I feel like you gotta keep, uh, keep going here, but... The advantage is definitely slipping. I assume there was one, but the king's cut off. That's about all we have because knight c5 is coming back. Bishop b6. I assume he'll play. Yeah, that stops knight c5. We still have some winning chances, but rook e7 he's about to do, which is pretty good coordination. If rook e7, then I think it's time to bring the king. I think it's uh, pretty important to keep this king cut off. This king makes it back in any way. I don't. I don't know. There's uh, if there's a breakthrough. Advantage has definitely slipped. There's no question about that. At least we have some imbalance in the position. And does he have to play c5 here? Taking never feels good. Like there's. I don't know. But c5 also. I think you should play it, but you're in this position where your knight's protecting the pawn. And if you ever move it, then you lose the pawn. So white's got to be going for this type of plan. E5 looks like it always drops things to rook D5. Yeah, and he wants to do this, but I don't think uh, it's going to be that easy. Rook g6, king f3, and what What can we do? Three seconds is just not a lot, uh, not a lot of time. Well, you lose upon endgame if you go here. So you definitely can't play that move. And if you play this move, you always give up this pawn, and there should be no way to promote this. I think black can play king h5. He can also just play a move like this. Just to get out of any tricky forks. That's exactly what I was thinking. I think the forks don't matter and you can still play this, but bishop g1 makes a lot of sense. Eric can't play. Yeah, he moves the knight, the king comes closer. And if he... Yeah, if he moves the knight, he loses the pawn. He can't play here. If he moves the pawn, the king comes here. It's just like, what to do? The best you're going to do is knight d8, knight takes c6, and... 
etc. King b4, king f3. I think it's just a draw. You could try a king e2 here, just to play a move. A different move. Yeah, but should be too much. Nothing to do. Nothing to do. King f3? Even knight g5 check here. This is the most likely draw. This will be the draw where Eric can say, I won your bishop. Yeah. I won your bishop. I was better here. But it's a draw. Draw does not send us to more games, no. But we had the extra night. The maximum edge was definitely around here. King F2 is a big decision. And with tons of time to spend on it, of course, we could maybe make some conclusions now. But in the moment, knight takes e6 is playable. And I believe it's king takes e4. Knight takes here. Now, there's king here, but after rook there, it looks okay. I think he was worried about this. And for example, something like this. Even knight takes c6, there's king b5. And knight here, there's king b5, king there, and takes. So those never really work where you trade the rooks. However, um, I guess I was thinking here, you could try a6. It's very, very drawish. Yeah, you can't even do this. You're pinned, so. It's, you just can't hang on to all your pawns. It's very, very unfortunate. So this would be a tough win as well as most likely you're gonna get Rook and Bishop, or Rook and Knight rather. So King F2 to try to keep things going. And I still think this was very good, but somehow his Bishop D8 move was incredibly resourceful. Knight takes e6 really doesn't feel right because it allows this check. So uh, the only reason I'm playing it now is because I saw bishop d8 and maybe this move is decent to play. Although honestly, <laughs> you can still play bishop d8. Um, but okay, white's going to have a chance here. Take and rook g7 after rook d7. This is what Eric played, and bishop d8, it's like, how strong is this move? Rook takes e5, just doesn't do enough.
I didn't really see bishop d8, to be honest with you. You know, I think it's the case here that rook g8 is the move. I really feel like this might be it. Although bishop e7 looks annoying now. No, bishop e7 I take it. So I'm really feeling this move. It stops bishop d8, which I only know now. Um, I'm threatening to check and have your king go to the g file, which is going to be great. And I'm really threatening to go here and here. I think this is the move. Um, you can go here. I would start with this check. And then like take something. This is the try at least. For sure this is the try. Knight b3 instead of knight e6. Knight b3. But he just moves the... He just moves the bishop. I don't really see anything there. Maybe the knight's better on... Well, I don't think the knight would be so much better on d2. But the point is, like, at that point, I think the advantage has already been significantly reduced to a point where I, I don't think it's that winning anymore. The advantage seemed to be peak, like, right around here. Bishop there is so strong. I, I have a feeling rook g8 is, uh, is the one. But it's tough king there king f2 best move i think it might be rook g8 let's think king d3 yeah so king d3 probably already allowed bishop d8 because of this crazy this crazy thing that i pointed out earlier which is that you can still do it um but he played king here and rook takes e6 i mean this is just so sweaty this is so sweaty. Rook g8, it looks like black can play this bishop f2 move, but in my opinion, you maintain very good winning chances here. So I think this was uh, this was the move somehow. Black has to play pretty well, it looks like. Amazing though. Rook h7, and okay, you have to find rook g1 to play for a win? Yeah, sure, but okay, okay. Rook g1. It's amazing. Actually, rook g1 is just elite. It's better than my rook g8 move. Because... Wait, so bishop d8. Now you get forked and there's no king on d3, so there's no... Way black can win the piece back. Rook g1 is just elite, though. You, you stop this with the fork. And you're getting ready to play rook here and rook there. Plus, if the rook moves somewhere... You also have knight d3 and rook g4. So, I mean, rook g1 is just from another dimension. Yeah, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say that, um, that the position was winning. I would say that we all know that Eric had the advantage here, but winning is a term you use where, like, you've established a position that is winning and let's say has a very clear way to get there because in that position it's like white plays one single move and that's it that's the only way to win i wouldn't say it's winning until that move is on the board usually a winning position has a few lines that you can choose from it's like yeah he missed a winning move winning move but i wouldn't say the position was winning until you know, you sort of have that understanding that, oh yeah, I can play a few moves here, it all looks winning, which one do I choose? That's when the position's winning. Because everything he did made so much sense. And bishop d8 was just so strong. But only in hindsight would I be able to tell you that bishop, eight, bishop d8 was like strong enough that you needed to prevent it. I didn't even notice the move, honestly. 
And what can you do here? Like black's getting e5 in. Yeah, it's just impossible to win at this point. Yeah, well, obviously tactics make the 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 position um, the position winning. But I mean, first of all, if there's a position where there's a tactic on like a bishop here, or a king there, and it's like yeah, white plays this, and it's a winning position. Yeah, the the position is winning because of rook f6. But it's because rook f6, and after you do a tactic, it's very clear that you're winning. Why are you winning after a tactic? Because after you do a tactic, you win material. Right, then you're up a piece. And then the engine will present probably a bunch of lines that all win, or they're all really good for white. They're all gonna be plus three, plus four, plus five, whatever. But in a position where, let's say the winning move is rook to g1, it's like, why is that the winning move? Could you tell me? Well, probably nobody could tell me exactly, you know, like, why is this winning move? There's so many things that are in, quite involved with it. So I wouldn't say the position is winning just because of rook g1. I would say it's winning because of rook g1. And then you'd have to explain and present to me like all the other variations about why it's winning. How do you handle bishop d8? How do you handle rook h2? How do you handle bishop g3? How do you handle bishop e7? Like so many moves to consider. It's just impossible for a human to just say, that a position is winning just because it's a move. It's just a move. It doesn't even really threaten anything. <laughs> it doesn't even threaten any, anything that crazy, you know? So it's just, it's not the same, it's not the same kind of, you can't really use the same terminology. It is a winning position, but it's not, it's not a winning position that you'll ever really beat yourself up. Four. Whereas if you miss a tactic that wins a piece, yeah, you'll you'll beat yourself up for that. Talk about squeezing water from stone. I mean, Eric did that in this game. This was an extremely impressive decision. I wouldn't have really had the understanding to say like, yeah, we could give up a pawn here and we'll have some winning chances because the pressure here is so, so intense. But Eric was down upon this entire game, and yet White was playing for the, the win, right? No. It's a really beautiful game. No credit for it, though. I mean, he drew the game, but the match is over. Rough. Rough. Well, that was tough. Uh, Kaishi Dumiao. Uh, Kaishi Du Miao, thanks for the prime sub. Appreciate it, buddy. We had, um, didn't get a win for you there, uh, Java Bandit, but I appreciate the 30 subs. 30 gifted subs from Java Bandit. Eric is officially out. I wouldn't say out, but he's officially done, rather. It's not a knockout event, but it's over. Every It's over for everyone after today. Thanks, Java. Not just today, but been supporting throughout the whole event, along with uh, numerous other people. 30 gifted subs, though, and we were at exactly, we were at exactly 100 for the day. He definitely tried his, his ass off this game. It's a real shame that he doesn't get another game or any sort of compensation for this. Just goes as a match loss on the score sheet. How difficult is it to win a game, right? Like this should put it in perspective. Eric had to play 60 moves before he saw the semblance of a real advantage in the game. And then when he finally got it, you got to play like one crazy kind of engine move. And if you don't play it, then Duda defends pretty much perfectly. And you draw, like <laughs> it's crazy how it happens. Like it's so difficult to win a game. Truly is. Zlatan Dog 456, thanks for the 11 month resub.
Difficult, difficult stuff. What's this genre of music called? Oh. Techno. All right. Yeah, I guess the match is over. I can take these cams off. GG's. How long will Eric stay in Norway? I don't know. I don't know. But I imagine he'll come back in the next couple days. Maybe tomorrow. Um, but anyway, the next time he would stream, I imagine it'd be jet lagged, tired, like an exhausted from the, all the chess and traveling. That uh, probably not till next week. Are there more of these events that he plays in? I just don't know the answer, right? It's all dependent on them because these are invite only. So hey, if you get an invite, maybe the answer is yes. But if not, then then no. <laughs> Pretty simple. So it depends. They do the invites after the tournaments. It's hard, uh, hard to really say until there's, you know, uh, an email in your inbox. These aren't events that Eric's really choosing to play. It's not like he can just go sign up for them. So. Tough day, boys, girls. Tough event. I don't know, what'd you guys think of it? Eric will be quite disappointed with it, I imagine. He left a lot on the table. Should've won against Geary, should've done a bit better against Jordan in the final game. He beat Shaq. A lot of matches only went three games, which I know he won't be uh, thrilled about. Like going to TwitchCon? Uh, you mean like way later in the year? TwitchCon in general just kind of like, I mean, we went there a while back. We've been a couple times. It's nice to uh, it's nice to speak to the sponsors and companies there, but in general, I think TwitchCon kind of sucks. Like the parties there suck. I've been to a lot of them. Like I can host a better party. I can also play better music. Um, maybe it's like I don't know. Most of the events there suck. I, I don't have a very high opinion of the event, but also TwitchCon is like if you think about how long we've been streaming on Twitch. Seven years. TwitchCon has never like invited us to TwitchCon. They've never offered us tickets. Two tickets to TwitchCon for people that have been streaming on your platform for seven years and have had as high as let's say 22,000 subs, which I know makes Twitch a lot of money. Like, <laughs> dudes, you could spot us like two tickets to TwitchCon. So just the, the process of me having to go on a Twitch website and like purchase a TwitchCon ticket is just really greasy. So I I definitely don't don't like it. it. It costs a lot of money to go there and you know if we wanted to meet fans or do any of that stuff, like we kind of do that. Eric did a meetup in Norway. We hosted our own Tulum camp, which is kind of like our TwitchCon. People can come meet us there, have fun, party, chess. Um, but no, the TwitchCon doesn't impress me. You're talking about TwitchCon EU, be me, I'm snotty, but yeah, either one. Doesn't, uh, the events don't really intrigue me that much. Next chess camp when? Well, maybe this year. Be, be nice to do one every year. Lazoom, thanks for the five months with Prime. I'm liking this set right now. Dubfire. Monkey Elf is ready. Yeah, I mean, when we're doing meetups and like, 
I mean, it's definitely not like cheap, so. It's a nice concept, like, oh yeah, it'd be sick to do a meetup, but when, when we host it, it's, yeah, it's not cheap, but we definitely feel like we're giving the value. Um, oh, speaking of, that reminds me, um, boards. I'll just, I'll just announce this verbally, um, cause we don't have a ton, but I know people, uh, have been asking about, um, about signed uh, boards and stuff like that. So I will say that we do have them. Um, we don't have a lot of them right now. We're just doing like a test run, but we have some signed boards that we're selling. Um, and we're not really looking to like, I don't know. We're, I think we do it more permanently, potentially with other things added to it, but we wanna test out the shipping and whatnot. And we have done, it works. So they're on our store right now. Um, Eric and I have signed uh, some chess boards. So we are selling those. We don't have a lot of them, like we really don't. So if you're interested in that, it, it is on the store right now, but we're not looking to make like a big thing of it right away because we wanna see like the interest um, before we do a real serious, maybe full-time release of stuff like that. Um, but yeah, curious what people would think of the way that we've done it and the way that we're selling it. Um, but yeah, it's on our, it's on our merch store, so you guys can check it out, but there's truly not a lot of them. So I won't, <laughs> I won't say <laughs> more than that, because if you're interested in something like that, then, then it, it is there for you. But people have been asking and after our, um, after us getting asked that question for so long, we did decide to finally list it, see what the response would be to you know, the price point we've selected and kind of how we've done it and how it gets shipped. But we've tested it out and I think it should work really well. So if it is popular, then we might, might do it kind of full time. Yeah, we've, we've met you a few times, Matthew. We tend to meet our biggest fans, you know. Uh, TDC 101, thanks for the four months. So refreshing, 11 months. Thank you, so refreshing, TDC. The resubs. Yeah, both of us have signed the board. But you'll see, you'll see on the store. So. I think it's pretty, pretty clear what you're getting. Exactly, chicken pants. The certain clientele already does. <laughs> Chess Brock calendar has also been requested in the past. Not as much as signboards though, which is why we decided to proceed with this. I figured good old Tesh. That's why we we're concerned that the, you know, the feedback might be that, hey, you know, Dan's signature isn't on the board. Hey, Omid didn't sign it. You know, I'm not interested. That's why we're doing the test run. Hey, eviscerated. 18 months tier three. Appreciate the visa. Yeah, check Manorov signature. Yeah, a lot of big signatures. A lot of big sigs. Okay guys, GG's. We're done the commentary for today. We are done the commentary for today. We're done the commentary in general. The tournament's over. So for example, 12 p.m. Eastern time tomorrow, there will not be a commentary stream. We're gonna get back to some of the regular scheduled programming. Um, I'm going to, uh, probably get a haircut later today, but I have some hours before then. So today I'm going to take, well, right now I'm going to take a short break, like a couple minutes, but I think I'll keep streaming for a bit here and keep going for two, two and a half hours. Um, and then I've got to go. However, I might be able to stream later tonight. 
a thirsty Thursday. Because now the commentary is done. I don't have to wake up like super early tomorrow for anything. I have some errands that I need to take care of. But I can keep streaming for a bit now, which I will. And then I think I'll be able to come back a little bit later this evening for another stream. So that's my plan. I'll be right back. Thanks for watching the commentary, guys. GG's to Eric. He really, I mean, obviously, I appreciate everyone being here for the commentary. We saw Robin. That was uh, really cool um, for the commentary. Just as a side note, I think that having Robin on here is like, first of all, you can see the difference in skill level between GMs, but Robin still got it. Like, the you can just tell from his analysis. It's really, really cool to see him uh, still flexing the knowledge, so... Anyway, that was nice to have him here. And um, I know Eric appreciates like whether he sees it live. Like you've seen him tune in even between games. So he's checking the stream, he's checking how many people are watching, who's chatting, you know, messages, comments, whatever they are. I'm sure he's well aware of it. So just being here means a lot to Eric. I'll say it because uh, he might not, but I know it does. So thank you guys. And I will be back in a couple minutes here. I'm gonna take a short break and keep streaming a little bit into the afternoon here, post Oslo tournament. So be back in a sec.
seems like a really good part of the set. Seems like a good part of the set. Hello. We're back. We might have to run an arena or something soon. It's been a hot minute. Since an arena. Oh. Hello, Neil. Great energy from you today, Neil. Sleazy's been here. The tournament's done, so all of the sophisticated, classy watchers might fade away, you know, like Homer Simpson meme, might just fade away into darkness and our normal, ruthlessly degenerate viewers might come out of the woodwork again. Not that that should be the case, but that's what it always feels like. You know, the classy Europeans, they come by, watch Eric play some serious chess, and then the tournament ends, and it's like, oh. <laughs> I'll see you for the next event. <laughs> I think we got some classy viewers. It surprises me too, but I believe we do. Mostly Europeans, they're the classy ones. My rating just won't go anywhere. What? Oh, this guy's resigned against me before, by the way. What's going on here? Do I not like this guy? I'm trying to remember. Oh, maybe he just doesn't like me. Look at that score. <laughs> Whoa. What happened here? I know that he's been resigning against me in a few games, but that was only very recently. He must have gotten pillaged. Oh, I can uh, reset this. The camera is literally right over the score. Let me move this down here. Um, yeah, what the hell happened here? 100 accuracy, 100 accuracy. Yeah. Move resign. You see this? I don't know what it is with this guy. Wait, it's every single game. Holy shit. This is back to 2019. He hates me. But then, this is what I remember recently as we played this game. Look at these games. They're all one move, two move. Look at this. So we used to play, right? But then, I probably flagged him. He didn't like it or something. I don't know. This is the last game we played like played properly. I mean, this is not even my, not even close to my dirtiest flag. Bro is just slow as hell. This this is not even close to like this is regular. And then from that moment on, it was just one move, two move, resigns. Just he never plays. And then he randomly played this game a week ago. And he actually played it. And he lost, so then he's probably like, all right, fuck, fuck this again. <laughs> Shout out Andy. Andy is Yoda. Yo, buddy. That's right, it must be some Minecraft. Let's get Andy. I'm, uh, I'm investigating why my opponent here is consistently resigning against me. He just doesn't want to play me. 
He played me in 2019, January. And then ever since then, he's been resigning whenever we play in one move, two moves. Zero move resignation. Then he tried his luck again in 2022. And he lost the scheme. And now we might not see him for three more years. Or we might not see him play a game for three more years. <laughs> Imagine you're tilted by somebody and the first game you play against him in three years is this one and you lose it. <laughs> oh, oh my god. Oh, guy must be livid. No, Java Bandit. He, uh... Are you talking about the games prior? Like, the actual games he played? I mean, I'm beating him over the board in a number of them. And I'm sure I got some flags in because he's pretty slow, but... In general, he's just... He's not about it. Does he do it to anyone else? No. He plays every single other game. This is just a me thing. Mm. Here we go, I found another one. He's resigning against Mela in zero moves. No, no, hang on. He's doing it to Ron Saddle. Saddleback. I think he does it when he just doesn't enjoy playing his opponent. I guess. He does it to this guy. Random guy. This random guy. Okay, so it's not it's not just me. He does it to other people. But very specific other people, it looks like. You know? I don't know. But he's probably done it against me the most, right? Oh my god, this is an insane loss streak. Holy shit. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, guys. Was he a good sport? Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's get keep this guy on the website. More of him. Capping his rating? I don't know. I don't I don't see any advantage there. It's true, Alfie. That could be possible. It does seem like the face he would have when he's doing it. Well, Ugi Yoshino, don't worry. He'll be coming back from Norway to stream just for you. You won't have to watch me anymore, brah. Invoking fear. Look at this. Everybody's afraid. The big bad, the big bad blatton. The hand blatton. Chad presence, yes. See them all run away.
I have to play this. A bit annoying. Should I just be taking this? It's gonna bring the other knight to c4. I guess let's go here. Knight a3, knight a5. B5 in one go there, and I, I don't really have an answer why I didn't. Because the bishop is much worse on A8. I actually thought I could play it for some reason. I certainly would. I really wish I didn't play that move. Alright, fuck you, bud. You want to draw a game up a minute? Be my guest, bruh. This guy seems very low T. He's a minute ahead on the clock, but simply because he's lower rated. He's also a GM with white pieces. It's a very strange behavior. He's a rating whore. Knight b5 forces knight a6. here. This also looks good, but I don't feel like I should be doing anything until I castle. Bishop d6 c4 looks um, rather strong. c4 still looks very strong. Maybe that's the case fish on fish. He's seen what I'm capable of, huh? this. I could go to c4, strange enough, as that may be. Thank you. 
Yeah, knight on b6 would be nice. For sure. Now we're on a different different plans. Pretty big move. I mean, he's obviously up here. See a pal? Hey, Eddie. It's a small KO. Medium KO. Then that. this queen seems to be operating on the wrong side of the board 95 looks annoying soon threats here. Baby threats. My queen's not great. Here is f3 a big time move? Might be. To have a square. I wanted to go here, threatening knight d2, but it's a little cheesy. Queen c2 would be annoying there, for example. Yeah, yeah, we're we're uh, playing a set right now. I think it's Dubfire and Capriati. Yeah, Dubfire at Awakenings. Nooch, thanks for the 44 months. Wow, that is a very surprising move.
I don't want to fix his pawns, so I'm trying to avoid that. This bishop looks terrifying. I ain't scared. I ain't scared. Queen c6, he has uh, bishop f3, which is uh, one thing to keep in mind. I may need to fix his pawn structure. Like, it may re be required of me pretty soon. But yeah, move like this, maybe. I was wondering if he was gonna play that. I'll take, Rook takes, I'll grab this pawn. So he has to take this way. Which Shouldn't be good for him. He's definitely the favorite to flag. Oh, so unlucky. Not a great pre-move by me, I guess. It's just not a great move in general, but he's obviously the favorite to flag by a long shot. Like, he's so slow, you can just tell. So we can chalk that up as like, that's like being up a queen and like dropping a queen, not flagging that guy there. You can just tell he's an old lad. Or if he's not old, it's not good because he's very slow. Hey, double reverse. Yeah, we definitely threw there. That should have been a win. I'm gonna be one of those old lads. Wait, I already am. I already am one of those old lads. Can't pity, can't pity it. Yeah, not gonna be, already am. I prefer my bishop on that square already. Although if knight g4 takes my bishop, I don't really care. I've always been wanting to play 
FTX E3 here. Plus this pawn will be hanging. Something like H3, Queen F3. I like the position here. I think it's something we can work with. It's probably got to go there now. That can't be good for him though. It's playable, but in general it can't be, can't be that great. Go here, can always take that bishop anytime I want. Queen there doesn't change anything. Maybe I have knight a4, but if I take, he still has to take with the pawn all the time. Knight takes d5, mod check. Maybe it's not the vibe. I'm pretty sure it's not the vibe of the position. There are better things we could do, like just play the position normally. I think would set me up. Here I'm gonna have to take double pawns and I'm not sure my advantage is gonna survive. But we'll do it. I think it wins a pawn. Takes, there's queen takes, which just loses. Yeah, this is what I was talking about. <laughs> I'm not sure if my advantage is gonna last. Takes, we go down here, we get a bishop on a2. I think it should be something. Although this rook d7. d7's not great. Let's go check. Now let's keep some pieces on. Knight d3. Gotta keep some pieces on against the lad here. Gotta keep some pieces on against the lads. Make them sweat a little against the bishops. JC Digital Girl, thank you for the five gifted subs. Take care, thanks for watching. Appreciate you being here, not just today, throughout the whole event. You're always around, so cheers.
I know Eric gave it his all. Thank you, thank you. Meanwhile, what the hell line is this? What the hell is this? No longer in Calgary, no. This is the move, honestly, yeah. I feel like I've seen this a few times. Once or twice. The knight gets the d6, but I've dealt with positions where the knight gets the d6, and it's not... It's never as bad as I think. You know, it can be a little unstable there as well, that's all. Rook on c7 is doing everything. This is a position that I know is better for white, but it can be tough to play properly. Like, it's easy to overextend. You're like a little, we're reaching a little far into the position. And we have some, we have some ideas to undermine the center as well. Is that a good move? Hmm. I don't think so. A5 looks really strong because he can't play C3, so he has to take it. And if you're playing B4 and you have to take A5, then I think it's a horrendous move. And if you go here... Well, this is definitely not what you want, is it? Okay, hang on a sec. Takes... I can't take back. I get that. But... I'm wondering if he's losing a pawn somehow. That's the annoying part. Is taking there. Hmm. I think we got to go for the murkiness. Wait, there is no murkiness here. Yeah, let's take. Uh, let's go this way. Because okay, taking. Is that, is that funny at all? I think my bishop will be quite strong here. Actually, no. I can't even take it. I can't even take it. Bishop will be strong though, if you can get a damn move in. Um, he's just covering everything, isn't he? Just, just covering everything. I have to probably do something like this. Everything was watched. Rook d6, yeah, everything was coming like just in time. Everything, including this move, just in time. 
Yeah. That's too much, huh? Wow, that was a, I feel like that was an insanely accurate game. That was a really good game by him. I'm gonna have to uh, understand that D4 move further. Didn't look good, which is always, when someone does something that you don't think is good, and they proceed to show you with extremely precise moves why it is good, and either the understanding was off, or the um, calculation was off, and I feel like the understanding was off. But I don't think I missed anything. Because usually moves like B4, if they work, there are moves that you've either seen before or it's like some idea with uh, the engine where you play like a very specific way and it works. Because conceptually, I thought A5 should be really strong. <laughs> it's really got me wondering now. Is he an engine? I mean, he's a title player. I mean, when you analyze with an engine. Analyze the game? No, I'm worried I might improve. Can't be doing that. I ain't streaming to analyze my games. I'm streaming to play them. Now, would it be a good idea to analyze it? Probably, yes. I'm trying to get this move to work. The bishop and knight coordinate really well there. He goes here, I'll tickle first with knight a7, and then I'll actually think about what to do. Probably this. So here I was thinking c5, takes, 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 rook takes, takes, knight takes c7. Is that good for me? I feel like it is. Okay, it has to capture it. Get a nice square for my knight after. I don't know, maybe it's still double edged, but. It's defended, that's attacked. I got two knight moves coming in next. And it's amazing, like. You you get a slightly different position and it feels totally different. Like this game compared to last game. I mean, this one is not even... Not even close. Yeah. I mean, the bishop just covers that and now... We just use our other bishop to go take everything. Such a different game. <laughs> Such a different game. So that basically that tells me like my guy probably had something in that last game, probably prepped all the way. Almost. Like may have had the whole game prepped. Because when he plays a regular game of chess, the level is so much lower than the last game we played. He was just obviously very well prepared in that line. So that's why I'm not gonna go into it. Sicilian? Dude, he's gonna crush me. He's a beast. He's a problem. He's a goon, he's a goblin. 
I walked into a chessable course. Honestly, I could have. And it could be his. I'm not even kidding. Chessable is making a lot of uh, players a lot better in theory, and it's kind of disturbing me. Oh no, I don't know if it's true, Jules. I was just saying. <laughs> it might be. It wouldn't be, uh... Wouldn't be insane to assume yes. Try this. At least they get a knight on b4. Can plant that guy there. Eventually I'll play b5 in an endgame. It's probably gonna take this way. <laughs> it's a little surprising. Not crazy though. before. Now here I was really thinking about h5 and I, I like it. I like h5. He pushes, g6, we're kind of chilling. If he takes, I mean, there's no scary knight moves. And I think I can castle this way and either use the h file or it just feels like I have an extra pawn in any kind of endgame basically. King is surprisingly safe here, I think, on this side of the board. And maybe try uh, g5, g4. g5, g4 by him is to be considered. I don't really like the, the you know, rooks doubled here. Like, I'm not doing that much with them. I think I'd rather go over here. Huh. If he gets the H-file, it is kind of annoying, eh? I'm not going to repeat, but I'll repeat once. This rook c6. Okay, we have to watch this square. General.
Isn't it clear that I walked straight into some theory? I got got in the Sicilian. This guy knows what he's doing. Because the other games are, f are far different. But that one somehow was like... It was just a stomp, start to finish. I feel like most of that was in some prep file somewhere. The whole game could have been prepped, yeah. Honestly. <laughs> Low to Tommy Shelby. And chicken pants. Hello, lads. Uh, I eviscerated, I think it's called... Website. I think it's called... Opening Tree. Do I know this guy IRL? I don't think I do. If that's his name, then no. In that one game, he it felt like he had it prepped like the whole way, but the rest of them have been slightly more normal. What was the consideration? B4 move. The bishop kind of runs out of squares. What happens on b4? Seems pretty critical. Knight takes b4, we start with this move. If f5, I think we just go all the way back. There's b5 to like save his bishop, but not extra special. Yeah, f5. Hmm. Maybe he just wants to sack like that now. That could be annoying, right? Oh, that didn't feel very good. I'd rather play just a normal position. Much rather play this position than that one. This is also better for me. A lot of weaknesses.
got his queen. Yay. <laughs> well, if you guys are looking for uh, some good prep against uh, the Taimanov, I think Buddy over here has some. I do not fear a man with one rook. Oh, it's about all you got left there, bud. This game was, uh, this game felt nasty to me. E4, surely white has to just be better here. Okay, this is what I thought, it's really not that bad. Definitely there were better moves here than taking, yeah, he, he, was, he wanted the B4, knight D8, A5 was really bad by me. Yeah, knight d6 and everything looks good here. I thought he played it really well though. What did I miss? Rook bb8. So I did rook b6 and I trolled because I gave him rook b6. This is the exact same idea, but just picking a square where I can't get pinned. And then I was gonna take it. I was very optimistic here. I thought, I thought rook here and I'm taking this by force and if he takes, I can take either way, and I, again, I'm winning something. Okay. Looks like it wasn't that impressive, I just suck. I blundered rook takes d6. What do you mean, in this game, or what are you talking about? No, rook takes d6. Oh, you mean rook takes d6 earlier, like didn't happen in the game. I thought you meant that it was actually played. Rook takes d6 earlier, queen takes d6. Like if he had played it, what's the line? Takes takes queen b7. And rook b8 doesn't trap the queen because of queen a6. Yeah, that sounds right. Hello, X-ray culture. Very high energy lab. He's been following since 29 minutes ago. 29 minutes ago. And you're just coming out now with the comments. Jeez, you waited a long time. You got them all copy pasted or something. Relax there, pal. He's on some uh, Dayquil at night and some Nyquil in the in the day. He's all backwards. Yeah, bro was loading up. He was loading up. He had them all control V. He was ready to fire on all cylinders. Oh, he accepted the match again. I was busy analyzing our games. <laughs> Sorry, bro. Three there, bruh. My bad. Yeah, that might be true, Dr. Lono. He wanted to tune in, see what the vibe was like here. Wanted to fit in, you know, fly under the radar. Sounds like an aggressive name. Draw denied Twitch. Offer this guy a draw. Eh, 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 eh. Eh, 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 eh.
Queen d4 actually hits the a7 pawn, which might be surprisingly relevant. I guess we are just slightly worse here. Maybe I should offer him a draw. It'll definitely get to climb. It's a surprisingly good move, yeah. He's throwing some in-betweeners at me. Not much to do, this guy just uh, kind of destroyed me. He's playing pretty quick, he's got that like uh, confidence to him, like he's a strong player. Interesting. German. Young? German? Strong? Bear856, thanks for the prime. D Sanchez, thanks for the 77 months. Definitely playing this all this stuff very quickly. Them Germans. Man, he resub for seventy seven months there, I'm a lone ranger, and you're you're gonna hit him with a typo? Feels bad. Feels bad, man. Ugh, there's all sorts of theory here. Ugh, there's all sorts of theory.
Ah. Doesn't even work. Amazing. Yeah, Queen E3. <laughs> okay. Okay. Can't even take this pawn. Hmm. What position are we in right now? Probably lose, but twenty seconds, so it's probably the move to try. Really doesn't look right though. wins with that. good way to do it. <laughs> uh, Dr. Lord Mayonnaise, thanks for the five subs. I really only traded to that, like I said, I think it's lost, but I really only traded to that because um, like 20 or 30 seconds and may as well. I think it's a, a thing that you just try to simplify as much as possible. Now, as for this, what's gonna happen here? They go like A5 in these positions. Somehow it always turns out okay. I don't know. I just know that A5 can be pretty annoying in these. Doesn't look right. I think that is never good. Yeah, the knight gets to A5, this isn't right. This is not right.
I'd probably take all the pawns there. Try that position. Hey, Eddie. I might be able to come back and uh, keep streaming later tonight. But I got a little bit of time right now. I'm listening to a set that seems pretty bouncy. I'm also playing someone that I can only assume is just very strong. Plays pretty quick, plays pretty well. What can you do? Which one maintains the most advantage? I think it's this. Amazing what, what he just did. Amazing what he just did. He, I thought he would for sure check me, but instead he went to take my pawn and then got into a draw. Like, ugh. Because I thought I was being checked, which is why I moved my king back. And instead he just went here, and obviously I should have just promoted, but... You can just tell. You're playing someone like that has the Pranav capabilities. The young lads, he has the like, you know, he knows what you're expecting as well. Should pay five loses in a funny way. Or at least I have to put my knight there, but then F5. 
5f6. And here drops material like that. And meanwhile, this is hanging. So I feel like he's done things very well. Here, it's the only way to stop this. looking move. This knight's very poorly placed. Needs to be improved. I'd love it on that square. Just getting the bad end of the stick a little bit. Not playing too badly. He's just playing a bit better. And Periwigs, thanks for the gifted sub.
This is bad. I think the position is bad. I think even this move is good. At the moment. Play this position so differently. I did it again. Yeah, this is. I don't have uh, control of any of the squares that I need to control here. Take it because of this. stick, I swear. It's very close games. Alvin, thanks for the gifted sub. Pretty much every game, very similar. I'll try it one more time. I mean, last game was interesting enough. Take this way this time. Spice it up. Thanks, Tim. Catalan Drip God. Appreciate it, Ilya. 15 months. Yes. Thanks for the gifted sub, Amafel. 
Uh, no worries. I mean, I barely attempted it. Pretty much as soon as you said, I just lost the game. So <laughs> I'm not sure if that really counts as an attempt. gonna go there. Interesting. I mean, I guess we just try to take all the pawns. It's gotta be the way to play. Just take everything. <laughs> Bring the knight back, start running that pawn. That's a scary enough idea. If we get attacked, drop back. We're also kind of threatening bishop c3. Using a ton of time. Knight c4. Yeah, makes sense. Probably just drop the bishop back, is correct. Rook d1, bishop e6. Takes, 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 knight a5, bishop c3. Yeah, if he goes there, now I can just rescue this knight. Maybe I should even put it here. The queen has one available square, but that's all she needs. Didn't even see this move. Amazing. What a blunder. I have to go rook d1. Should still be winning. Really something. The resources. Finally got a damn win in there. Finally. It's a 
pretty good game. Got a bit sketchy near the end, but three connected pass bonds should be too much. We're gonna play this again. I should be playing it so much differently. Okay, take. Bishop back to c1. Knight f4, knight b7, does my knight get trapped there? No, I have d6, so just never works. Yes, to take it. e4, is it worth playing now? Or e3? Take and take on f5 has to be good enough. How's this? How's this? Queens, but I have bishop c4 coming if he goes back to f7 or e6. I don't think he can take it. Not being able to take that knight is not a good sign for him. He should be in serious trouble here. We can just take. I don't see anything because d7 will be falling as well at the end of a lot of lines. Okay, let's play uh, Nimzo. Zinian. Thank you, Alvin. Queen's Indian it is. Getting back into this match a little bit. I really felt like, you know, he's a very good player, but I felt like I, I was pretty competitive. Just uh, getting the short end of the stick, as I was saying, in some of those first uh, games. 
That looks like a proper recapture. Wonder if he's gonna play that move. And it just takes it. Normally I'd play that move, but I think I really need a B5 in, otherwise my position lacks a sturdy plan. Put the knight there, knight e8 if knight b5. Trying to put my knight somewhere nice. Like b4 is a permanent square, at least that solves some of my initial problems. And then I can try to kick these other guys out, these thugs out of my position. I can kick that guy, but not really more than that.
Yeah, not enough time there. Lost anyway, he played well, but even if I was to make some type of comeback, uh, there just wasn't enough time. Because he's also extremely, extremely quick as well. You can tell. Close. Hey, Aiden, Clark. Hello, lads. Month resub from Berenz and Chess. Thank you, dude. It's uh, a little frustrating here. I don't like my position. really don't like playing this move, but I just feel like a position where he wins that piece is so easy for him to play. I'm watching this square, it's not much though. I'm hitting two things here, there's, there's a few threats, a few little uh, trickies. Getting the light square bishop is great. That much is, I know, is good. Also, I can go here, and if he plays some knight move, I just move my queen again, and his knight has to just go somewhere. Although if you place knight f5, that's not not that nice. It's great to be covering that square. So much so that you may consider him like that. Pretty much has to play this at some point, right? Position is too annoying not to. He was threatening to win my my piece. This knight's very annoying. Very annoying. doing without it. The bishop is not great yet. Maybe here in trade. He's gonna get very active very quickly. Thing is, I don't think he wants to trade with me. Or I would be happy if he did.
Thanks again for the 80 months, Brenzen. Yeah, really gotta earn these wins. Really gotta earn them. Guy's a good player. Alvin, buddy, 5,000. Heading to bed. Well, there's a good night win for you. 5,000 bits from Alvin. Former chipmunk. Thank you, buddy. I suppose we can put it here. It's the same thing. I'll just go back. Next. I still have to go for it, basically. devilish intentions from the lad. Rook D1, I think it's gotta be C6 for the boys. Bad night. Very bad night. Knight probably needs to make an appearance here, which means f6 needs to happen, and f6 is not a great move. Plus, after 94, it's very tough. Night is so bad. I think we have to do it. Need a square for this damn night. Night G6, yeah, it sucks, but. Consider this move. Just wins a piece. It's unfortunate. That's unfortunate.
Taking this way, there was some E6 stuff that looked wrong. Wow, that was really accurate. Bobble later, thanks for the 14 months. Yeah, 98 bishop g5 was a very good maneuver. But anyway, like being down a piece, one thing. Against this guy, being down the piece felt, um, we, we were really struggling uh, to get back in that one. It's definitely good enough to convert that. I think d5 here. I guess we just do it and find out. This one, eh? Knight d2, queen b2, rook d1, knight moves, maybe grab that pawn. Can also take on c6. But that obviously looks wrong. Hey Canty, what up dude? 37 months from Canty. Three years and change. I think just something like that is happening. I was gonna play here and here, and my queen is somehow not able to be won by a discovered attack. Okay. That is a threat. Actually, even if I go here, it's a threat. Ugh. That's unfortunate. Yeah, that's pretty gross. And this loses to that.
I think I just have to castle. Double check. It's really not much to do. Double check and meet. It's just meat. <laughs> meat is meat. There's not much we can do here. TXC, thanks for the two months. TXC Steven for Stefan. play. I'd rather take that rook. I think. I think this is the play. I'd rather take that rook, and if he wants to play there, then I'll take it, and at least I force him to play rook f2, which is not a move he wants to do. I think I'd rather take this rook because I want the pawn separated. takes e3. Queen here. I can just move my king because I have bishop b6. King f8 should have been king d8 and that's my own fault. King d8 is better in so many ways. I have rook e8 as well. Now he can take here and maybe give me a check, take this knight, it's still good for me, but just shouldn't be, shouldn't have been played. K3 
game is so much better on D8. It's a joke. <laughs> it's a joke. Why is my king on d8? <laughs> I thought about winning it properly, but then I would just hate myself for not just flagging him. And it's so much easier to flag if you just pre move the rooks because they can never be taken. So may as well just do that and uh, take the win. It was a deserved win, it was a nice game. I also blundered early, but what can you do? That ain't my fault. Not sure why I played that. I'm really not sure why I did that. I almost never do this. You start with b4 maybe. But I don't think I've played a move like this and allowed this in London in a long time. Not a good move. <laughs> to play that. If he goes b3, then um, okay, might have to take like this. Although it's just so good for him. It's just so good for black. This bishop kind of sucks. I'd love to trade it, um, but he's definitely gonna move the knight somewhere. I need e4, so if he goes here, we move the bishop and look to play e4 and queen a4.
how annoying. How annoying. Hey, congrats on the job, by the way, Blood Latte. You got a job as a teacher. Way to go, brat. I'm happy for you, lad. this move. I need E4. More than anything in life, I need E4. I'm falling apart on the other side of the board. Alright, good player, GG's. I am rolling now, but I also have to go. I gotta, I gotta get my hair cut, like right now. So I got a jet, but I said, I gotta get my hair cut, I have dinner, and then I will hopefully be back to stream late Thursday stream. Eric's tournament's done, so I don't have to wake up tomorrow. So I think we can do an evening stream, but I gotta get some things done first. Um, he was a good player. I enjoyed the match a lot. I, I thought he was uh, very strong, very quick, but definitely beatable. And uh, thought it was back and forth. He played some really nice games. GG's. I'm gonna take off. Um, like I said, Eric's tournament is done. So uh, there's no 12 p.m. stream tomorrow for that. But we'll get back to some regular scheduled programming. All right, I'm out for now. Take care, guys. Thank you for tuning in, and I will uh, do my best to uh, stream tonight. I'm playing Tale of Us at Afterlife 2016. That's the set that's playing right now, and it's pretty damn good. All right, guys, bye for now.